can light up the bell tower red. The pack is back in the national semifinals for the first time since 1983. NC State beats Duke for the second time in the month of March, this time for a trip to the final four. Incredible. The voice of Gary Hahn, who will apparently never be able to retire. Not done yet. Oh, my gosh. It's the Adam Gold Show. Thank you very much for spending some time with us on a, what day is this, Monday? It is a Monday. Oh, boy, the days run together. Uh, that is Victoria. Man, the world belongs to NC State, and we are just privileged to be near it, apparently. Yeah. Incredible stuff. The men heading to the Final Four in Phoenix. The women heading to the Final Four in Cleveland. Incredible. Uh, where I hope all the dimensions on the court will be uniform. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was the fifth game on that court. Nobody noticed? <laughs> Not one? I mean, look, it ain't my job at home. To visually measure the three-point distance. No. It's not my job. And I, on a, I'm not even lying, I couldn't tell when I watched the game. No. Either game. Mm-mm. No. Look normal. But a fan near the court said, huh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> he eyed it. With his eyes. Wow. It's very perceptive. He went, that eh, doesn't look right. And sure enough, the three-point line uh, had irregularities on one side of the arc. And it was different from the other one on the other side of the court. And like, are you joking? Wow. But whatever. It's very detailed-oriented. I wonder if this person notices details like that in regular... Like just regular life. <laughs> These are not outfield dimensions of fences in baseball, which vary from ballpark to ballpark. Mm -hmm. There is not a guy, it's not a range. Yeah, the three point line is about this or about. No, it's a specific distance. Anyway, uh, there you go. That happened actually in the regional final. They noticed it before State and Texas played. That's crazy. That's when they noticed it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Nothing All right. Wow. Uh, what a weekend. What a night for NC State. Uh, tremendous scene at the Bell Tower in downtown Raleigh. Uh, Graham Hill from the radio station here, a 99.9 The Fan, uh, who also co-hosts the Pack, Par Pack Therapy podcast with Tim Donnelly. Uh, he actually went down there when the team came back. It was like 2.30, 2.45 in the morning. Um, shouts to him. He had to be here early today, too. Uh, we'll all sleep when we're done. Yeah, and right? he's young, too. He is young. He doesn't he, need as much time to bounce back. You think uh, You think that. Uh, but, man, unbelievable. I know. What is going on. So much good energy. All right. Today is going to be, we're, I mean, it's going to be a celebration of North Carolina State basketball. Um, Chris Corciani is going to join us. Uh, Ernie Myers, who actually does game, does the women's games. Uh, they were in Portland, so he came back late last night, so we're going to wake him up uh, in about an hour or so. Uh, he's going to join us. He played on the 83 team. Fun. That won a title. Uh, Monty Tao is going to join us again. We thought we had a great time with Monty last week. Mm -hmm. And I know that there were a lot of people who thought the ride was going to end. But Trip Tracy, as we remind everybody that the Hurricanes still have a season. They do. Uh, on Saturday night, during my pregame conversation with Trip Tracy, as we were signing off, he asked me who I have in the game Sunday. And I'm like, I did not expect the question from Trip. And I went, uh, State. Yeah. I, j I said, I just think State right now is playing better basketball. And when you start, when, when you get on a roll, when things are uh, just are in the flow, yeah. you become better. I've, I mean, I, I say this about every sport, but it's all true. And one day we'll all remember. 
that when you aren't thinking, when you are just being, you're better. Yeah. And that's where State is right now. That's the zone that State is in. They're just being. And that was the hardest thing, I think, for the Blue Devils to overcome. But we will talk about that uh, as we move on here. But this is going to be uh, maybe a little bit of a different feeling program uh, today because of, I mean, it really is a celebration. 41 years since the Wolfpack time. men have made it to a final I play. love it. I'm yeah. so happy for them. Yeah, I am too. Everybody should be happy I for really them. am. And I said uh, that DJ Burns was made for the final four. This is a stage that DJ Burns is ready for. He's so fun. My gosh, is he ever. All right, let's get going. See, I think today is also about fandom. Oh, big time. Big time. And I want to celebrate fandom today because there are people who don't want to be fans because of the pain it causes. But the pain that fandom causes does not compare to what the elation is. Right? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't. The pain you get more often. Right. But the joy is just so big and so great. You can live off that adrenaline from last night forever. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm not sure this matters, but it's 427 miles Between Glendale, Arizona, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. So if people want to read into that whatever they want, have at it. Yeah. Have at it because it seems like it's relatively close. All right. This is a great great time to be alive. Uh, NC State 76, Duke 64, Purdue next on Saturday in Phoenix. I'll, I'll borrow from what I saw on Twitter. I mean, do you really give State a chance against a seven foot four inch two time national player of the year? Sure, why not? In Zach Eady. Do you really? What chances would any team have of beating a team that has a player like that? Has Lurch. Go back in your mind and you'll figure out what I'm referring to. All right, first of all, people are looking at this the wrong way. Okay, in prob- maybe in two ways, but the second way I'll give you. But the first way is that this is more about Duke than it is about NC State. What didn't Duke do? And I get that, but I think you're looking at it the wrong way. I do. Because this is about what NC State did. It's about what NC State did that Duke could not counter. That is, And that's just the personnel. Duke had no answer. For DJ Burns, zero dominated the game. I know John Shire said in the press conference, we could, you know, you can't let uh, Burns and DJ Horn go off. Right. DJ Horn only had 20. DJ Burns was doing the real damage, and there was no answer for DJ Burns. But I think this is really about belief. It's about belief in each other. It's about sticking together. It's about commitment. It's about all of these things that we roll our eyes at. But that's what it was about. And then it was about confidence. It was about believing that you were doing the right things in the right way. And once they saw a little success, and I would say it started really, because to be perfectly honest, Louisville wasn't a great basketball game by state. Kevin Keats even joked like neither team played a lick of defense. He was right. Syracuse wasn't a great team. It was that first win over Duke, I think, that made maybe made believers out of state. Yeah, planted the seed of confidence. Right? That was the first. Oh, yeah. now we're going. It's a big game. Then, of course, the miracle over Virginia, which, look, if Virginia, if the guy at the free throw line, I believe, was an eighty-five percent free thrower, mm-hmm. if he had makes, if he makes that free throw, state doesn't make the tournament. None of this is happening. None of this is happening. But when you are presented with that opportunity, you got to make good on it. And what state is doing is taking making good on it to a new level. 
And here's Kevin Keats on the run. I think the biggest blessing is they, they've stayed true to who they are. You know, obviously, you know, when you go through a season, there are going to be a lot of ups and downs. Um, number one, you got to win every type of game to advance. Um, but there are going to be some emotions. Like we, we started off five and one in our conference. We lost our last four games. There are going to always be some adversity. And I, I, you know, what these guys have strung together games, they've never wavered in their belief. It, it is an incredible, incredible set of circumstances that we've seen. So I like to bring in other sports as analogies. And I'm sure we have a lot of people who play golf here. You hit a really, really bad drive and it caroms off a tree out into the middle of the fairway. What do you do with that break? What do you do? Do you hit another really bad shot? Do you still make bogey or double bogey? Or do you take advantage of that, put one on the green and make a putt for a birdie? And that's what NC State has done, except I think they put one on the green and made a putt for an eagle. And I'm just going to, I don't care what happens in Phoenix. And this is not self-medicating because if you've won the game State has won, you can beat anybody, except maybe Connecticut. That might be tough. <laughs> Connecticut might be a different animal. Yeah. But you're all, you've already won. Seriously. I've always looked at Final Fours like that. You get to a Final Four, you are already a champion. A banner's going up. Oh, yeah. They're putting a banner in PNC Arena. Right? Maybe it'll say national champions on it. But it's going to be a Final Four banner. And that is enormous. All right, just quickly to the game. Duke got to halftime with a six-point lead. Probably should have been larger. I mean, we watched the game. Should have been larger. But it wasn't. Duke didn't take advantage of the opportunity. They missed some open looks. State's defense is pretty good, too, by the way. But Duke still should have felt pretty good about themselves shooting as poorly as they did and being up six. Yeah. And not being in foul trouble, right? Yes. You were were good. You weren't in foul trouble. By the way, and I, I tweeted this out, both teams fans were mad at the officials and both had every right to be mad at the officials fortunately the game did not come down to which team got screwed by the officials more because i think it was a tie but it was one of the worst most e unevenly officiated games i have ever seen it was bad it was like you're really calling that when you didn't call this Mm -hmm. i don't get it so being punched in the face, basically, on a layup attempt, wasn't a punch, but it was a shot. It was a shot right across the face. Like, we're not calling that, but we're calling the foul, you know, we're just silly. Silly fouls that they called when you don't call that. I get it, calls are missed. But, man, it was a poorly officiated game. Very poorly officiated game. Um... But I thought Duke had the opportunity at halftime to kind of reset, six-point lead, come out, and play with the lead. The comfort of having a six-point lead, which is is nothing really. Frankly, a 12-point lead isn't much in a basketball game. But boy, when the second half started, only one team looked comfortable. And it wasn't the team with the six-point lead. NC State came out in the second half and just looked like this is where we're supposed to be. And the other team, Duke, looked like they were in a panic. Looked like everything was a rush. Had to fight for everything. They were scoring early. And then it became harder. And it didn't become harder for State. It just continued being comfortable for NC State. And that, to me, I said... We were pro- we were watching the game, uh, whatever the uh, the time was. State took a 42-40 lead. And I said to my wife, we were watching the game, and I said, this game's over. She says, it's a two-point game. I said, yep. 
Only one team looks like they are comfortable in their surroundings right now, and it is not Duke. And NC State looked like this is where we're this is where we belong. Yeah, they definitely got comfortable. Oh my gosh! And I thought Duke looked rushed and panicked mm-hmm. all second half. I mean, State just kind of slowly, methodically stretched out the lead, chipped away. Incredible stuff. Uh, good for the Wolfpack to get to a Final Four uh, after 41 years. And I said today it was going to be about fandom. Because to me, and I don't know, I mean, look, I'm a fan. I'm a, Met, <clears throat> I'm a Mets fan, first and foremost. I know all about heartbreak. I think Mets fans and state fans are, by the way, very similar. I know all about heartbreak and, uh, you know, falling short. But I also remember some special, special years. And I'm telling you that it makes the the comparison, there is no comparison. The joy is so much more powerful than the pain when it comes to fandom. My friend Jay Kumar, who uh, we have been known to uh, go online and talk uh, English Premier League football and U.S. national team, um, we're going to talk NC State fandom here because uh, he is as big a state fan as I know. And the video you sent me from your house, like you and uh, I, I don't know who you were watching it with, uh, but the joy and the disbelief that this is ending in a Final Four run. Walk me through how you watched the game and I, just your emotions you don't want to put you don't, you don't want to think too far ahead how did you keep that out of your brain i don't know i mean to be honest <laughs> i still don't really know what's happening um I, I i am just kind of blown away so that is um the, i watched the game with my best friend best man at my wedding roommate from the day one at nc state grant kennedy and both of us we were in tears. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it now. Like, I, I, I can't put into words what this means. My wife and I are expecting a child this July, <laughs> and I'm going to be able to tell him that you were born an NC State's ACC champion, and they're in the Final Four, and the women are in the Final Four. Yeah. I mean, arguably – the greatest day in NC State sports history yesterday Um, between the two teams making the final four. It just, it's special and it's, it's deserved for, I think a fan base that gets a lot of stick from different media Uh and, and other fans and has had to watch their two biggest rivals blow past them and remind them that they're, you know, second class or, or not as good or shouldn't expect these things. And so when it happens, it's just special. And it, I don't I don't know the words to, to describe it, but I, I'm just so grateful for this team and this moment. And, you know, to happen in, in 2024, um, thinking of all the great 24s that, uh, that wore that <laughs> NC State jersey, um, it's, just, it's just really cool. Very interesting. Twenty uh, fours like uh, like Julius Hodge, like Tom Gugliotta, right? Uh, who are who are the other twenty fours? T.J. Warren. Oh my gosh. Twenty four. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, there are a number of names up in that up in that arena uh, that that have twenty four next to them. Very nice. And so it's just it's 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 pretty cool. Um, it's just fun to see Raleigh. Uh, be a state town. Um, it's always better when state wins, but it's it's good to see it be a state town. And I know there are a lot of Tar Heels and Blue Devils in town, but it's it's a, it's a Wolfpack country right now, and it's 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 awesome. It's it look it is, it has been an incredible ride. I'm having so much fun with it. Uh, and I I mean I started this by talking about how the 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 power of the the joy is so much greater than the heartbreak. Because of maybe it's because there's been uh, so many times where it hasn't worked out. Did you feel that? Do you did you feel that the the joy 
I mean, overwhelmed moments of, I'll just say, despair? It, it took it all away. I mean, the last however many years of fandom seen so many almost runs or, or thing or just bad teams, none of it matters. I mean, the joy, as you said, it's just so much more powerful and it's just so much more, I don't even, I, I, again, I'm at a loss for words. It's just, you and I can talk for an hour about soccer hey. and I don't even hey. say it right now. <laughs> Jay Kumar is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Uh, what is your first, what is your, what, what is your worst memory? What is the worst loss for you as a state fan? Oh, God. I mean, where do I start? We <laughs> lost by 51 to Chapel Hill. We scored 24 points in a basketball game, which I didn't even, like, I didn't even know if it was possible. <laughs> like, and, 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 and we did that. Um, I've seen, I was on the front row to see Chandler Parsons hit that shot when we, oh. we were uh, playing Florida. Yeah. I mean, I saw us lose to New Orleans. In the Sydney Low era, I didn't know New Orleans had a basketball team. <laughs> um, like, you know, we've, we've seen a lot. I saw that, um, you know, this is a ACC semifinal. Alex Johnson uh, push off call to charge to end the game that, that probably would have gone on to maybe win the ACC title that year. Mm-hmm. Um, the Tampa run in 06, 07 with with Sydney's first year that yep. got us all believing and then like to fall short at the, the final hurdle to Carolina. I mean, where do we're like, what go? I mean, <laughs> you got a uh, Freegy. I don't want to bring up too many bad memories. I thought school, you were going to start with got, Matt Freegy. I mean, we got that. We've got, I mean, it, it's just, it's endless. I, <laughs> I feel like you could, you could start anywhere and you know what? None of it matters. We beat, we get, we got to cut down the nets twice this year and the teams we beat to cut them down are Duke and Carolina. Come on, man. <laughs> well, so I, I said this earlier and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep you just like another minute here. Um, Jay Kumar, long time NC state fan. The, the fact, I think the run began, this ran, this run began with the first win over Duke, the Thursday night ACC tournament win over Duke. Uh, yes, obviously you needed the miracle to beat Virginia, but I think the belief began with the way you guys, I mean, really out-battled the Blue Devils to even get to Friday night to give you the shot to beat Virginia. That's where I believe the belief began, and maybe that helped beat Virginia the next day. Um, do you see that, or uh, or was it two nights later when you beat Carolina? The belief, I think, began actually a little earlier than that. I, I, I think the the way we we handled Syracuse um, is you know, nobody talks about in this run, um, but it was a, it was a dominant. I mean, we we, we took care of business, and I yeah. think from that point on, that why not us mentality took over. The Duke game was kind of like, okay, we're here. It, it's it's really happening now, and then once that shot goes in from O'Connell. <laughs> that that was just confirmation bias. You're like, no, no, it's 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 really happening. <laughs> and then for it to be Carolina, and then of all the teams, I was I was looking at the bracket and I was like, just I don't want to play Duke. Like, oh my gosh. And and then it's Duke, and and you you work your way through it, and and everybody was talking about, oh, what an easy run to the Final Four for Duke. They had an 11 seed, a 12 seed, and a 13 seed. Well, you got to get past them, and and I think. NC State the last three weeks has not played like an 11 seed. No. Um, that's probably fairly seeded based on the whole season. But, yeah. man, they're playing confident and they're playing as well as anybody in the country right now. Oh, there's there's no question about it. Like, again, I keep saying this. Had State played with maybe more confidence during the regular season, they don't finish 9-11 and 11. In the league, they finish probably twelve and eight, maybe even thirteen and seven. People think I'm crazy, but think about how many games they probably should have won based on the 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 roster that they've got. 
versus some of the like they shouldn't have lost to Syracuse twice. They shouldn't have lost to Virginia Tech at home. Like this should have been a better team. Uh, it just for whatever reason wasn't. And when they get to uh, the, then they go on the run. So they got seated where they belonged based on their rem- resume. But in the overall, you know, when you look at the team and the way they're they were capable of playing. Yeah, way underseated. They should have. They would have been uh, closer to a, maybe a six or a seven than they were an eleven. Uh, so this was ne- this was never going to be an easy game for the Blue Devils. I will let you go there, Jay Kumar. Uh, I felt your joy yesterday, and I appreciate you making some time today. Yeah, let's go pack. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. Times two. Times two. By the way, the Rialto Theater in downtown Raleigh. As we break here. The Rialto Theater is owned by a friend of this program. He has been a uh, a host of this program yes. host many times. Hayes Permar. Love Hayes. Uh, uh, absolutely. On the marquee of the Rialto, mm-hmm. which I believe they showed the game. They did. Yesterday, right? Um, on, the, on the marquee of the Rialto, it says Final Fours. Plural. Go Pack. Yes. Times two. Mm-hmm. Two Final Fours. Uh, all right. When we come back... We will spend some time with Chris Corciani, who knows a little bit or two, a little bit about winning games. Next. Rally to Boom, Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Bring on the madness. Final score, 76-64. The Wolfpack beats Duke. You can light up the bell tower red. The pack is back in the national semifinals for the first time since 1983. NC State beats Duke for the second time in the month of March, this time for a trip to the Final Four. Incredible. College basketball tournament action on 99.9 The Fan is powered by Carolina Alehouse, Fairway Green, and Bailey's Fine Jewelry. Hey, it's Adam Gold from my friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book, where busted brackets are a thing of the past. Because maybe you were like me, and you had plus 245 money line NC State. Wasn't that great? Look, I ain't an expert on this, but I do know value when I see it. And FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and you can get in right now with $200 in bonus bets when you place your first $5 wager. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold to get started. We'll get you $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose when you place your first $5 wager. FanDuel.com promo code Adam Gold to get you started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit more than a game Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Every time. I'm Drake May, quarterback at UNC. Trust the team at Mitchell Heating and Cooling for your HVAC needs. Together we win. Call Mitchell Heating and Cooling today. Contact us now at MitchellHVAC.com or 919-556-5069. Train. It's hard to stop a train. The best solutions. The time is now, folks. Dennis Cox here for my friends over at Law Tigers. Law Tigers, Tobacco Road, Harley Davidson, Shiny Side Paint, and your Carolina Hurricanes. They're all teaming up to give the Ultimate Canes fan a custom Hurricanes 2023 Harley Davidson soft tow motorcycle. But we're in the 11th hour, folks. It's going to be given away on April 5th, which means you need to enter now. Go to Caniacs. Bike.com. That's KaniaxBike.com for your chance to win this custom painted beauty of a bike. Again, KaniaxBike.com. Enter now. Sick of being upsold at gyms? 
my guy, you're currently a base member? For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a Swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. Adam Gold here from my friend Dr. Lori Travers and Travers LASIK, the Triangle's only LASIK specialist who can take you to 2020 vision and it's more affordable than you think. 0% financing for 24 months is available. And in the spring, giving you $1,000 off. That's right, $1,000 off in the spring. All you got to do is call 919-510-6830, 919-510-6830. Travers LASIK, see what you've been missing. This is Adam Gold. Anti-vax, anti-sax. Who's going to say no to that on the campaign trail? You can put that on a bumper sticker. You can slap that on the podium when Aaron Rodgers is at the campaign rally. You're not going to be a football player for the Jets and be on the ticket and campaign. You can't Uh, do both. The Adam Gold Show. Sweet dreams are made. Number 10 song on the Billboard charts from 1983. The last time the Wolfpack won a national championship. I mean, that's appropriate, right? Yeah. Why not? It is. All right. The uh, Obviously, uh, everybody is still running on adrenaline from last night's state win by a dozen over Duke. And frankly, really wasn't that close if you watch the second half because there was only one team that looked like they were really made for their surroundings last night, and it wasn't Duke. That was State. Chris Corciani, a legend of NC State, joins us on the Adam Gold Show. When did you allow yourself to believe that this was going to happen? Adam, I I still haven't gotten gotten over the ACC tournament. I mean, this is, <laughs> I mean it's, it's so unreal. I mean, you couldn't write some comical movie. I mean, it's the wildest thing that I've seen in sports, and it just happens to be, you know, with my favorite team. So it's a, it's a beautiful story. It just really hasn't sunk in that, that NC State, not only did they win five games in five days, we're going to the Final Four. <laughs> when do you leave for Phoenix? I'm leaving Thursday. <laughs> can't, can't wait. I mean, I can't wait to get out there and soak it in. And, you know, our, our fan base has been starved of success for, you know, close to 40 years. And, right. it, it, you know, this, this is so great. I'm happy for the team. I'm happy for Coach Keats. But I tell you, my heart goes out to all the fans that have, put up with all the struggles and, and futile seasons. I mean, th- this is this is for Wolfpack Nation. Chris Corciani is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Something I said during the ACC tournament was that, I mean, how great it was. It was the first time in 80, since 87 uh, that the Wolfpack had won the conference tournament. And it was really the school that, I mean, that built the ACC. Like this is no this is no disrespect to the North Carolinas and Dukes who have carried the flag for the league the last fifty years or whatever it is, uh, but without Everett Case and NC State, this probably doesn't happen. I mean, it was it was like because of their emergence that really led the conference to be uh, to be what it is what it, what it was then. Um, so it it sucks that for the last thirty some odd years. It just hadn't – it hadn't been able to be at the top. Yeah, there's no question about that. You know, whatever case did years ago and, you know, the Dixie Classic. Um, but for the last, you know, close to 40 years, we haven't held up our end of the bargain. You know, our neighbors, Dukes and Carolina, you know, they've won championships. And see, I mean, they've got tremendous programs. We've had a season here or there, a Sweet 16 um, – you know, but, but it's our time. You know, this is a, an opportunity not only 
to, to continue this run, but it's also about building a program. You know, I've said for many years that NC State had good teams, but it's different having a team or a program. We haven't had a great program, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to kind of, you know, take this run and, and carry it over uh, to next year as well. Chris Corciani is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. All right, so how do you deal with DJ Burns? I mean, I like I know he's going to get uh, matched up with Zach Eady from Purdue, but it just seemed like nobody from Marquette had a, a, a clue what to do. Duke didn't have a clue how to handle him. This is now twice in the last uh, you know week and a half that Duke's had to deal with this and couldn't figure it out either time. How do you deal with DJ? Well, I think Purdue's in a little different sure. predicament because sure. they have someone like Zach Eady. But I think all the teams we've played and, and what the experts say, I disagree. I, I think you have to double him immediately, take the ball out of his hands. And if guys are knocking down threes, you kind of live with that. He He's so – uh, you know, he's in a zone right now. Yeah. And when he gets the ball, I mean, he's going to score. Um, you know, but the guys around are all stepping up and, and knocking down shots. But if, if I were playing him, I'd double immediately, get the ball out of his hands, and uh, see where the chips lay. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't un- – that has to be- happen. And I, I guess if you go back to the to the Oakland game, they swarmed him and got the ball out of his hands, and uh, it nearly worked for them. Like I'm yeah. again, I'm not sure why that wasn't a plan. Maybe uh, last night for for the Blue Devils, uh, but I think the beauty is that he is such a good passer, and he seems to be a tough shot maker. It's amazing I mean, what he's done. I mean, he is the he's the the, the darling of uh, March Madness. Everybody's, just, but it's amazing that big with the way he moves and his, his footwork and soft touch it reminds me of cj warren like every time the ball hits the rim it's like magnetic it just goes in <laughs> and he's got this infectious personality and you know nc state loves him but i think america is is really behind dj burns and this nc state team jay williams on espn this morning called him america's big man right yeah no doubt i mean he, he, he's just uh you know, he's got that smile on his face he's really hard not to root for. But I'll tell you, Adam, as, as much as he needs to NC State, to me, the, the unsung MVP is Mike O'Connell. <laughs> you know, what he's done, not even in the box score, but just the, the soothing effect when he's on the court, it's night and day from regular season. So what he has done, to me, is, is remarkable. He's settled everything down. He's taken the ball out of DJ Horn's hand so he doesn't have to have all of the responsibility of not only scoring, uh, but also getting everybody uh, where they're supposed to be. Uh, look, there's a lot of play- p- players we can uh, we can look to. Uh, Mo Diara has been amazing. Ben Middlebrooks, uh, the Ben Middlebrooks game against Texas Tech. I mean, uh, the state win without whatever that was from from Ben, from ben Middlebrooks. Yeah, it, it hasn't been just one guy. It's been, you know, a number of players every night. But, again, I've watched this team play all year. It's, it's a team that's, like, possessed. Yeah. They, they, they have a, a, an air of confidence that they, they truly believe. No one else did. No, nobody in America believed. No, nobody in the NC State uh, fan base believed, but they did. And, and it just really makes you take a step back and, and really think, you know, if you believe in yourself, you know, anything is possible. I, I did not think this was even remotely possible. And what they've done is just, again, it's unreal. No, I, I, I didn't think it was possible either. I didn't think they'd beat Carolina to win the ACC title. Uh, I thought they would. I thought they could get to a Sweet 16. I didn't think they would. But my feeling about this team was earlier in the year, and I said this, I don't see a reason why they can't compete for one of the four double buys atop the ACC. I didn't see, in terms of their personnel, I didn't see anything dramatically different between them and Clemson, between them uh, and Virginia or Pitt or the other teams that were below the top two. And obviously they have proven they beat Duke 
two out of three. So they're, in terms of a basketball team, every bit as good as they are. But I didn't see a reason why they couldn't do that. It became apparent, though, over the course of the season that there was something in some way, shape, or form missing. And I thought, man, they just got to figure out what the best solution for them is going in to the ACC tournament, and then maybe they can get on a run. But I didn't think they were going to be here. But how did you look at them during the year? Were you kind of surprised they didn't have a better regular season? Well, you know, I went back and I looked at the the, the games in the regular season. This team, like you mentioned, it, something was just missing. They they weren't getting blown out of games. I mean, they were they were in games right. in the last four minutes. So you, you know, you're talking about a a turnover, a missed shot, you know. But so so they weren't far away. And you know, a lot of people gave Keats a lot of. Uh, you, you know, they were on him because in his press conference he would say, you know, we're, we're right there, yeah. we're working, you know. And, and, you know, hindsight, he was right because they were in so many games. You know, they were just missing just a little bit. But what they've gotten from from all the guys, they're like different players. And you could go with O'Connell, Mo Diara, uh, you know, Metal, Metal Brooks. All of those guys, they're, they're different. That's not the way they played in the regular season. Again, it's almost as if they're possessed with this belief. Oh, there's no question about that. And I think, and you'll agree with the, and we'll close on this a uh, little bit here. W- once, once you get confident and you, uh, you have all of that belief, it just seems like it's easier to play. Like you, you're, you, you're not thinking, nothing slows you down. You just go about the business of playing like you would, and you get in a zone. Yep, you get settled in the game. I think really the, the first half over in Chapel Hill when they were up, you know, what was it, eight or nine points at halftime, they ended up losing the game. But I think that's where they said, you know what, we can be a really good team. I think that's what really catapulted this whole run was saying, you know what, we went over to Chapel Hill and, you know, we went toe-to-toe. We were up big in the first half. I think that gave them a lot of confidence. But when the game starts, they settle in and they kind of probe and and they've been able to figure it out. They've been amazing. Chris Corciani, I appreciate your time. Uh, You know, it's great to still be a fan. Because to me, this is a lot about fans. It is great to still be a fan. I'm great that you are. I'm grateful that you are a huge fan. And I appreciate your time, my man. I'll see you out in Phoenix. All right, A.D., we'll see you. Thank you. You got it. Chris Corciani here on the Adam Gold Show. All right, uh, when we come back, we've got one-timers still to come. Ernie Myers, who played on the 83 championship team, does color on the women's broadcast, so he's headed to Cleveland. Uh, but I know he checked out what the guys were doing in uh, in Dallas against Duke, but we'll talk about both with him next hour. Uh, we'll come back one-timers. Q's and A's next. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Trust ACT Construction Equipment and Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders to position your tree service for success. ACT Construction Equipment is your authorized dealer for sales, service, parts, and rentals for Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders. ACT Construction Equipment has been your authorized dealer for Bandit Equipment for over 10 years. Visit one of our six North and South Carolina locations or actce.com for more details on Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders. ACT Construction Equipment, always the right equipment for the job. During this sports season, the Governor's Highway Safety Program would like to remind you to buckle your seatbelt when traveling to and from athletic events. Whether you are driving out of or across town, wearing a seatbelt is your best defense against injury or death in a crash. Start the season off right, prioritize your safety, and buckle up. Every seat, every time. Remember, click it or ticket. It's the law. This message is brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association and the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Program. All right, North Carolina, FanDuel, America's number one sports book, officially live, up and running here in the Tar Heel State. And new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up now. Then you can bet on everything from hoops to NASCAR and everything in
in between all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Get started with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You must be 21 or older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Bonuses issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. The Body Armor State Games are coming to Charlotte this June. Registration is open to athletes of all ages and skill levels. In 25 different sports. The Body Armor State Games features 13,000 athletes and 700 teams. Don't miss out on North Carolina's largest sports festival of the year. Visit BodyArmorStateGames.org today. The Body Armor State Games are proud to partner with Truist, Harris Teeter, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. It's the first day of the first grade and she found a new best friend. It's a laid back Sunday afternoon you wish would never end. The homemade taste of bluebell and good friends gathered round. The good old days are being made right now. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream. A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made Look for Bluebell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Fair housing is more than just a celebration in April. For North Carolina's realtors, it's an everyday standard. For the 56,000 realtors across our state, we embrace and support fair housing to stamp out discrimination in all forms. As realtors, we believe fairness is worth fighting for, and we won't stop until the fight is won. Celebrating Fair Housing Month, North Carolina Realtors. We open doors to everyone. Paid for by North Carolina Realtors. This is Adam Gold. Is a hot dog a sandwich, Mike? It's a pizza sandwich, then it's bread with toppings and stuff. When you fold it, yeah. <laughs> And it's a calzone. <laughs> calzone's a sandwich, too. Oh, goodness. They're all under the sandwich umbrella. So is, is, that, that, is that, that a yes is, or that a no? Is a debate, that is a debate I will never embrace. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I am Adam Gold. So this was also in the Billboard Top 100 of 1983. Man, where was it? Where was this? Is this song outside the top 50? What? This what, is a banger. What? Is, this is a tre- tremendous song. Oh, is what, wait. Was this in the top? Uh, was this from 1983? Yeah, top hits of 1983. All right. I'm just. I'm just. I'm looking for. Well, this is from Spotify, so I don't know if we're. <laughs> Okay, I was just going down the Billboard chart, but I'm sure it's there. I mean, there's yeah. no reason why Elton John uh, wouldn't be there. I'll find exactly where it is. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of really good ones. There's a lot. Uh, yes. All right, let's uh, let's get to it. One timers, questions and answers. I should have the answers, but there's no guarantee. That's okay. I'm sure that you will. So, kicking things off, I mean, this is going to be about state. This is a state one-timer. So, um, is there something else from maybe another team, maybe even a different sport, that reminds you of what NC State is doing right now? Just off the top of your head. I mean, no. Um, but it's like it's like any other sport. Because I cover hockey, okay? The 2002 Carolina Hurricanes, I think, had the eighth best record in the Eastern Conference and then ended up getting to the Stanley Cup Finals. Mm -hmm. And because of the way they did it in 2002, there were three division champions and all three were seeded one, two, and three. And the Hurricanes were the third best 
of those three, obviously. And then both division champions lost. So the Hurricanes, as the top remaining seed, were suddenly like they had home ice advantage. And whether or not that mattered or not, probably not because they won each of their series going to the Stanley Cup Finals in Game 6 on the road. So they closed out three straight series on the road. Closed out the Devil series on the road, the Canadian series on the road, the Toronto series on the road. But it reminds me a little of that because it just clicked for a team at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've, I, again, I keep saying it. I thought they were better than this, than they played all season long. I'm not trying to tell you that I knew they could get to a Final Four. The NCAA tournament is a unique, living, breathing, different animal. Mm -hmm. It's not about who the best team in college basketball is. It just isn't. Football will be different. But basketball, the tournament, is just awesome. That's why it's called March Madness. It is crazy. Crazy. Not March sanity. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mark logic. March yeah, logic. Has exactly. nothing to do with logic. Exactly. That's why it's so hard to win your office board. <laughs> yes, it is. All exactly. right. So, yeah. It's a, but it reminds me of, of something like that. Okay. That more than anything else. Okay. So, I know that this could just be dependent upon your perspective and fan bases and whatnot, but... People looking from the outside may say that, oh, there was no rivalry between NC State and UNC or NC State and Duke. Do you think this is going to reignite it for all those people who thought, no, it's just between UNC and Duke? Well, well, okay, there's a lot going on there. Uh, First off, um, of course there's a rivalry between State and North Carolina. Of course there's a rivalry between State and Duke. You can't have the proximity and the history between the two schools without having a rivalry there. Uh, So that's one thing. The only people telling you there's no rivalry are the people who go to Carolina that want to keep little brother down, if if it is little brother, and the same for Duke, right? That's the only people telling you that there's not a rivalry. Um, But if there can be only one, which of course there can't be, Mm -hmm. then it would be Duke and Carolina. That is the one that, you know, ESPN2 was built on. But there's... Plenty of room for multiple rivalries. Sure. Alabama has a rivalry with Auburn and Tennessee, right? They do. So you can have multiple rivalries. And, yeah, this is absolutely a rival. And it doesn't even matter what happened yesterday. Although, I will point this out. Duke has now been knocked out of the NCAA tournament in a three-year span by North Carolina in the Final Four and by NC State With a chance to go to a Final Four, those leave scars. Oh, yeah. Those leave deep scars. Those leave scars, scars, man. Deep scars. Gosh. Yeah. If uh, if anyone had doubts about rivalries, I Hmm. think this would squash that. So uh, so what kind of impact do you think this will create with recruiting? Because, like, you know, with NC State football, they were in that transfer portal making things happen. So how do you see this impacting State's basketball program? Well... What I'd like to see it do for NC State's basketball program is give them a basis, like a base from which to grow um, high school recruiting. Like, I know they were the only team that had all five starters that started their college careers elsewhere. That's not sustainable to be really good. You have to have a recruiting base, your roster base from within. Now, Duke probably should have added a player or two from the portal for this past year's, for this year's team. Um, But I hope it helps. But we don't know the answer until the results are in. I hope that it will help them in recruiting. It has to. Yeah, exactly. Well, and so now once people hear, oh, State won, now it's on to Purdue. Everyone's thinking, second question, Zach Eady and DJ Burns, how do you see these worlds colliding? A lot. <laughs> yeah. A I lot mean, of friction. it's in, in some ways, it, it is a heavyweight title fight. Oh, 100%. Right? DJ Burns is going to have to score over a bigger player. Zach Eady will have to back down a player who he can't move. 
like he has been able to move. He's 300 pounds. Yes. He's been able to move everybody else he's uh, played, but he can still shoot over DJ Byrne. This game, I think, will come down to who guards the perimeter better. That's what this game will come down to. Yeah. Who guards not just preventing shots, but preventing easy passes. That's where I think this game will be won. Nice. And this might have to be a quick one, so can't forget about our state girls. They're going to see South Carolina. How do you see this one going? It's only South Carolina, right? I'd pr- I'd really prefer not to talk about that because South Carolina is a machine. But, man, I'm proud of the ladies at NC State. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger's a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right. That's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body, to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerating me all natural and that's what i'm about i'm gonna tell everybody why i'm better oh and by the way it looks like the competitive satch is back we're all in the same boat and i'm getting better and i'm watching them stay old go to qckinetics.com get relief and your game back call for your complimentary consultation call qc kinetics 919-400-5473 that's 919-400-5473 in Cary, clayton raleigh and wake forest 919-400-5473 it's not monday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday it's tuesday 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 the very first tuesday New scratch-off tickets are available on the first Tuesday of every month. Announcer set first Tuesday. Brand new scratch-offs, brand new fun. Now from the North Carolina Education Lottery, every first Tuesday. Tuesday. Must be 18 to play. Problem Gambling Helpline, 877-718-5543. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every home run, every hit, every inning, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. See for yourself when you sign up today and get $150 in bonus bets when you bet just $5. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only must be physically located in North Carolina. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call one 877 Seven seven one eight five five four three, or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Terms and conditions apply. Making dinner, trimming your hair, mowing the lawn. Sure, you can do it all yourself, but why? At AutoBell Car Wash, our team cleans your whole car from the inside out in 15 minutes or less. We do the work so you don't have to. People can tell. We do auto. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Dennis Cox. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes. With almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. Call 919-381-1760, 919-381-1760, loanpronto.com, 919-381-1760, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This hour on the Triangle Sports Leader is brought to you by the Ritchie Law Firm Injury Lawyers. You can feel the madness! Go to gotbrian.com. That's gotbrian.com. 
WCMCHD1 Holly Springs. Take us with you on radio, web, app, Alexa, and YouTube. 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. Collins turns down at three. She finds James wide open. Bam! Her sixth of the game. Great ball movement by the Wolfpack. Texas is going to let NC State dribble this out, it looks like. 12 seconds left. Sanaya Rivers still dribbling at midcourt. Five seconds left. NC State is going to the final four. I actually want to hear that again. Uh, we're going to hear it again in a second. Uh, because uh, half of that duo will be joining us here in about 20 minutes. Ernie Myers, who uh, does color on the women's broadcast, but also a national champion from 1983. So we found Elton John's uh, I'm Still Standing yes. on the Billboard uh, Top 100 list. And frankly... I, I don't know who was voting in 1983. <laughs> I know. Because it was the 74th ranked song. But no, no, 74. That was the first of NC State's it was. two championships. In 83. Don't you know? Uh-huh. Well, no. The, it, right. In The second one was 83, but 74 was the first of two championships, and this was the 74th ranked song. Exactly. So all, all sorts of things. Just like uh, when Jay Kumar joined us earlier, this is 2024, and he was thinking about the great 24s mm-hmm. in NC State history. And See, it's all full circle. My friend Julius Hodge who I'm going to physically force to come on the program at some point this week, especially since Thursday and Friday we will originate from Phoenix. Mm-hmm. I'll still be here, but you will be in Phoenix. Yes, yeah, in Phoenix. Holding the fort down in North Carolina. It's a lot to do. Yes, there is. There is a lot, <laughs> a lot to do. All right, take a second look at the news of the day. Call this take two. Can I hear that women's uh, Final Four play-by-play call one more time? Cleveland, you better get ready. The Wolfpack is coming. Back to the Final Four for the first. Okay, we can't hear it anymore. Uh, And that was the national broadcast. The one we heard uh, coming back was the uh, local broadcast and Ernie Myers. Uh, who will join us in now 18 and a half, 17 and a half minutes. Uh, I look forward to talking to him about it. Uh, what a great, I mean, look, the, we, we knew all year long they were great, right? They were a third seed. And frankly, if it weren't for a couple of late losses, they might have been higher. There was at one point where they lost to nobody. Except, I think, South Carolina, uh, which happens. So they're going to get a crack at the Gamecocks, and boy, they are amazing. Amazing. Dawn Staley's team is next level. Uh, but at this point, NC State might just have a, hoosh, a horseshoe yeah, lodged. They might. It, it might just be lodged at this point. <laughs> uh, why fight City Hall? All right, Kevin Keats on this run to the Final Four for the first time in 41 years. It means a lot. You know, I, I think, you know, our school deserves it. You know, our players have really worked hard. Um, the fans deserve it. Uh, we've done a really good job. Um, you know, when I say we, I mean, I always say we. I'm saying these young men in the locker room through all of the adversity that we have went through, ups and downs of winning games, losing games. Um, they never lost their faith and stayed together. And it, it means a lot. It really does. means a lot to everybody that entire. Look, nobody is under any illusions. There were a good number of people that lost faith in this particular group. Right, attendance tells you that uh, how uh, fans exited stadiums, you know, you know, with ten minutes left to play in games. Like we have to, we have to, you know, remind us ourselves of everything that was going on. And I think it's also fair to point out that before, if Michael O'Connell doesn't hit the banked-in three to tie the game and send the ACC semifinal into overtime. If he doesn't hit that shot, then we're probably in full-blown coaching search. 
at NC State. But all, oh, yeah. all year long, I've been saying the same thing. I'm like, I think Kevin Keats is a good coach. Sure. I think the, their problem is that the roster, it, it, they've had a hard time maintaining a roster. And every year, it seemed like it was a completely new deal. And it was the case pretty much this year, too. Mm-hmm. That it was kind of a new roster. Really just two holdovers, right? Two players who were part of the core, Casey Morsell and DJ Burns from last year. I think that I think that's basically it. Um but man, this team came together at the right time. Yep. And they definitely they definitely have a lot of what you need. Look, it's gonna be hard to beat Purdue. It will. It'll be super hard to beat Purdue. Uh, who has just been on a mission? But and when it, everything clicks, though, you got it's... you have a player that's really hard yeah. to deal with, and that's what we're going to go now. <laughs> a tree, <laughs> uh, no question about it. Jeremy Roach, he didn't have to guard DJ Burns, but Duke's senior guard recognized how good he is. He's special. Um, he's he can do it. He's what is he like 270? I mean, he's just he's just a low down uh-huh. there. I mean, he gets to the spots, soft touch, got a jumper, got passing vision. So like you can't double him. So he, he's gonna pass out the post. Um, so kind of got to go one on one. But um, man, he's a hell of a player. Um, got most outstanding player for a reason. And um, yeah, 270. What are you talking about, Jeremy? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, let's just move on. Um, but yeah, DJ Burns has all that. Uh, Kyle Filipowski, who had to bang bodies with him for uh, at least some of the game before he fouled out. Uh, what did he say to DJ in the uh, congratulatory line after? Yeah, he was, just, he was just showing love to me, and I was showing some love back to him. I was, I told him, um, I told him to, you know, go win it all. I told him to, uh, that he should be proud of himself. I'm, I'm proud of him for how much he's accomplished in these last couple months. Um, you know, he's just, you know, he just even when, even when he, he beats you, you can't hate him. Um, just, uh, yeah. So just uh, showing some uh, love to one another. I, I'll, you know. Big man respect big man, I guess. Yeah. Um guys, so it was so hard to watch the the kids for Duke who lost, right? Mm-hmm. It's just I watched the uh the post game press conference. Jared Jared McCain was Oh on I mean, fire. Too emotional. Uh, like he really could not even speak. Uh John Shire was asked in the press conference. Remember he's been here there two years. He was asked essentially about the state of the program. They're heartbroken after the game because it didn't go the way they wanted to. I'm thinking about these guys. Where Where's our program at? I think our program couldn't be in a stronger place. We were just 20 minutes away from going to a Final Four in our second year. You know, I don't shy away from our expectations or what we want to do. But for me, that's not the way I'm thinking at all. I'm just hurting for these guys right now. That's... Tough loss. Okay. I really... See, this is what, in some ways, this is what bothers state fans. And in some ways, as somebody who, believe it or not, is more of a neutral observer, yes, a fan, I've always, I've never hid that I was a fan of uh, people coaches, players that I like, that I have relationships with. But this is what annoys us, is that there is a sense of entitlement when you win as a rule. You feel like, well, we're always going to win. We're supposed to win. Therefore, we will win. And every single year, you must earn your wins every year. If you're really worried about the state of the Duke program, I just don't know what you're watching. Yeah. So in year one under John Shire, they won the ACC tournament. 
They did get knocked out in the second round by Tennessee. Young team got kind of big boyed by a bunch of grown men at Tennessee. They lost in the second round. This year, they get to an Elite Eight. And admittedly, they didn't play well. NC State had a lot to do with that, but Duke didn't bring their A game. No. They got away with a with uh, with not playing great offensively against Houston because Houston had no offense. They were awful offensively. And so they got away with it. But last night, they weren't going to get away with playing a mediocre offensive game. What have we been saying? At the you can like a school like Duke or one of the top seeds like North Carolina, you can get away without your A game in the first week, but you cannot when you get to week two. I don't care who you're playing because you're going to come up against a team that is playing well to get to where they are. So St. Peter's, as a 15 seed, made it to the Elite Eight. Yeah, they did. Doesn't matter who I, – I actually forget who they beat in the Sweet 16. It doesn't matter. Um, so when you play, when you are there and you're in the second week, you're going to have to, you're going to have to absolutely bring everything to advance. And Duke didn't. I think this is, this was more about a, the way these guys were playing. Like Tyrese Proctor can't play the game he played last night. Can't for Duke to have a chance. And I still think Proctor can be a wonderful player, but he didn't have a great year for whatever reason, didn't have a great year. At the end of last season, it looked like he was going to be Duke's best player this year. No. I don't know where you'd rank him among Duke's players, but he didn't have a good good year, and he didn't have a, a consistently good postseason run. Jeremy Roach didn't play well. From the game against Carolina to close out the regular season, the next game against NC State, um, and I thought he played a really good second half against Houston. I thought he would carry it over. Not really. Decent start, but he didn't sustain it. Jared McCain was probably Duke's best player. He was the team for a lot of the game. (laughs) And, And even he went through a stretch at the end of the regular season where uh, he didn't he didn't really have to do much because Duke was winning games regardless. But his, his his shooting had kind of fallen off a little bit. But I still thought that over the four games of the tournament, and you can you can look at stats all day long. I think McCain was probably their best player in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and that's probably not a good sign for Duke. That your best player should have been Kyle Filipowski and Jeremy Roach and Tyrese Proctor and that everything you got from McCain just uh, was like icing on the cake. But there's that's a lot to put on a, uh, a freshman. It's a lot yeah. to have because, honestly, their offense went away. It absolutely went away. And that's what I was talking about before, that when you look at the uh, the way the second half started, even though Duke still had a six-point lead about three minutes in, you could tell things were coming too difficult for Duke, and everything seemed breezy mm-hmm. for NC State. There was more freedom of movement. There was there were more, the looked like there was more wide open space, and I didn't think Duke had that. No. Some of that is State playing better defense than Duke. Some of that is I think Duke kind of went into a little bit of a panic mode. Yeah, they were definitely flustered. And I'll throw John Shire into that category, into that into that uh, mix of maybe it was a little overwhelming for him too. And I'm not in any way being disparaging here because in 2018, Virginia was the number one overall seed and played UMBC in the first round. And if you go back and watch that game, you could tell Virginia's players were flustered and Tony Bennett was. Nobody's going to doubt whether or not Tony Bennett is a great coach or not. I mean, I might hate his style as a, you know, the way they play, but I'm not doubting whether or not he's a great basketball coach. But it looked like he was at a loss. And I don't think that Duke did enough to maybe change the calculus of the game. 
Like they just were, we're going to play behind DJ Burns or we're going to try to guard him here. Uh, and it wasn't working. It just wasn't working. That the, You had to get the ball out of his hands. And you had to make somebody else beat you. And they just couldn't do that last night. And I think John was right about this. He said their bad def- bad offense led to bad defense. Some of it was turnovers. Some of it was poor shot selection. Mm-hmm. Some of it was just flat out missing shots. Did a lot. Um, they were getting rebounds. They just couldn't make them. Yeah. I also think that Duke became a little bit one-on-one focused yesterday. And that happens when you're in a little bit of panic mode. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the biggest problem for Duke. They were. Um, but the real, actually, the biggest problem for Duke was NC State. State was simply better. They played the right way. If I could borrow a line from our friend Rod Brindamore, uh, they just did. They played the game the right way. We're going to talk to Ernie Myers about uh, the Wolfpack. Maybe we'll even start with the ladies who are headed to Cleveland. We'll find out when Ernie is leaving for Cleveland. Next. Rally to Boom. Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Bring on the madness. Final score, 76-64. The Wolfpack beats Duke. You can light up the bell tower red. The pack is back in the national semifinals for the first time since 1983. NC State beats Duke for the second time in the month of March, this time for a trip to the Final Four. Incredible. College basketball tournament action on 99.9 The Fan is powered by Wake Med, RoofWorks, and Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC in Sanford. Hey, it's Adam Gold from my friend Gordon Miller. Miller Lending, Kildare Farm Road in Cary. The place where you can save thousands of dollars when you buy a house or thousands of dollars when you refinance your mortgage or both, as I have done 11 times in my mortgage-getting lifetime. Now, I haven't always bought new homes. It has happened a few times, but every time I refinance, sometimes within a year. And do you know what happens if you pay closing costs and the rate drops to the point where you want to refinance in a year? You waste thousands of dollars. That's true. Don't waste thousands of dollars. If you have thousands of dollars to waste, pay cash for the house. MillerLending.com, home of the original no closing cost mortgage, so you can save thousands not paying closing costs and save hundreds when the rates come down while saving thousands at the same time because you didn't pay closing costs. MillerLending.com, that's the website to go. Miller Lending. An equal housing lender, NMLS ID 250-2146. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades, regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We are talking natural body biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Sheenkup. Dr. Sheenkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. 919-400-5473 with locations in Cary, Clayton, Raleigh, and Wake Forest, 919-400-5473. It's bow time. <laughs> Something new just dropped at Bojangles. Take the bold taste of a crispy golden chicken supreme that's been seasoned to perfection, then add dill pickles, Carolina gold barbecue sauce, and a toasted bun that's great on the go. What do you get? You get a Bose bird dog. In fact, you can grab two of them for five bucks. So when you're on the go, headed to practice, or need a snack, grab a Bose bird dog. Hurry in before they're gone. Available for a limited time. It's bow time. 
There's no time like bow time, but sometimes it's go time. No time to stop. Introducing Bojangles' new Bird Dog, a seasoned to perfection Bojangles Chicken Supreme, dill pickles, Carolina Gold barbecue sauce, all on a toasted bun. Great on the go. Try two Bird Dogs for just $5 or a two Bird Dog combo for just $8. Hurry, Bo's Bird Dogs are available for a limited time only. When you're hungry for flavor and value, it's bow time. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. This is Adam Gold. There are two groups of people who do not really know how college sports works one are fans it's not your job and the other people who get paid to represent citizens of the united states on capitol hill the adam gold show the adam gold show i'm adam gold victoria person the program there you go Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf, what, 10th? No, that's a different one. Uh, 17th overall. Yes. Philip Rivers, Mm -hmm. 17th uh, on the Billboard Top 100 charts in 1983. Ernie Myers was in the Top 100 charts of 1983. I have much higher than that in my mind. Uh, Does color for women's basketball on the radio. Uh, and of course, as a national champion, Mr. Myers, how are you today? Hey, what's up, Adam? How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Have your feet hit the Have your feet touched the ground in the last uh, 24 hours? No, I got <laughs> off the plane last night with the women's team about uh, two in the morning, and we drove to Reynolds, and it was a thousand fans out there waiting. So, uh, no, you got to pinch me, man. It's still a dream uh, watching the women and the men get to the final four in the same day. It's just crazy. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me, let me start with the ladies real quick. Um, they, they, they come across some adversity. They lost a few games during the regular season. They probably want back. Uh, didn't go well in the ACC uh, tournament. They get to, how did they flip a switch? Because it's so hard to get it back going once you think you have it and it gets away. How did they flip a switch and get back on it? Well, I mean, they're a team full of veterans um, with uh, River Baldwin and Mamie Collins and, you know, Sanaya Rivers. She's been there with, you know, won the whole thing with, uh, you know, South Carolina. And then you got Isaiah James. So they're a veteran ball club. And, you know, Coach Westmore is a, a coach's coach. Yeah. So he got them ready. He wasn't going to let the disappointment of not winning the ACC championship affect the rest of the season, this was a totally whole new, uh, totally new season coming up, the NCAA tournament, and he got them ready for it, and they were ready to go. You know, I, I always felt like they were one of the best play- teams in the country, yeah. and then uh, they proved it. Well, there's there's no question. Uh, Azia James was, I mean, incredible in the entire region, uh, but it just seemed like she took her game to another level when the tournament started. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she is a baller, uh, yeah. plain and simple. You know, not and not only does she score, she plays defense and yeah. she can pass. She, she saw the game. She made some nice passes when the defense collapsed on her. The river ball win to go to the basket. So she's a team player, but um, she's a locked-in, knockdown three-point shooter, and uh, she's a big game. I call her Big Game James. You know, because <laughs> she uh, she brings it in the big games and. Uh, uh, she was on fire that whole uh, region. No, she was. She was. She was dynamite. And uh, I think there was a uh, there was a moment in the game yesterday in the fourth quarter as Texas was making a little bit of a late push, uh, and the corner three she hit. I mean, did it end the game? Probably not. There were still free throws and whatnot, and you know, three or four minutes is still needed to play. Uh, but I thought that game took the air. 
out of the Longhorns? Oh, oh, without question. I mean, her and Mimi Collins hit two big corner threes uh, in that game. And, uh, you know, she she knows how to put the dagger in, into the game. But uh, I just thought the whole team, uh, uh, Sanaya Rivers, um, floor general coming in and, and, and running the show, and then River Baldwin, they got the ball inside of her, 16 points. Uh, it was just a, a total team effort. And also – uh, who I call Madison Hayes, who I affectionately call the glue. <laughs> you know, she went to the free throw line, knocked down some big free yep. throws. She's always getting rebounds. She gives the team what she needs. She don't have to score. If they need her to score, she scores. But, um, you know, I just thought that the uh, the whole team just came ready uh, to play. What is uh, what is this going to be like in Cleveland in the first in the national semifinal against South Carolina? Um. Well, I mean, you know, they're the monster. They haven't lost a game, 34 games in a row. And uh, I don't think this team, this veteran ball club, is afraid of anybody. They played against the best teams in the country all year. Um, you know, so uh, it's just going to – it's nothing be- between us and them but air and opportunity, you know. So um, I know they're going to be ready to play. Um, you saw how they played against Texas and uh, Stanford. Yeah. Uh, they're going to bring the maximum effort. They have they have a uh, a seasoned coach who uh, is just not happy to be in the final four. I know this is his first final four appearance, yeah. But um, I know he's not. Um, he's going to be ready. He's he has his teams always well prepared, always well scouted. Um, they're going to know everything that South Carolina does and doesn't do well, um, and he'll capitalize on that. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm not looking at South Carolina like oh you know right. I've been I've been in that party before. You know, everybody <laughs> thought Houston was going to stomp us, and they were the big monster. They had lost, you know, they had 27 games in a row. It, it, you know, when you get to that final four, it's just one game. You know, uh, it's not a series. You know, you got you, right. have, you don't have to beat them the best out of seven. <laughs> that 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 is true. It is the ultimate equalizer. I'm going to get to the men in a second, but I'm just curious uh, when when you found out that the three point lines were not uniform in Portland. What were you thought? What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking, uh, you know, it was an ABC game, and I didn't want them to delay the game, and you know, a nationally televised game to, yeah. uh, you know, um, affect, you know, the game at all. I mean, both teams are going to have to come down and shoot on that line, so it was equal, you know, uh, <laughs> you know. But I saw them trying to measure the line, and um, an official from the ACC, I mean, the NCAA, came and told them you couldn't do that or whatever, and um, we just wanted to get the game started. I'm glad both coaches agreed, like, hey, we're going to keep this going. It's been that way the whole tournament. So right. Why stop now? It was, it was the fifth game played on that court, and it took a fan, yeah. it took a fan to actually bring it to their attention uh, that the thing was different. I, I can't for the life of me. Uh, was, it, was it noticeable to you, especially? No. So, so it probably wasn't that big a deal. Uh, but you know we're we're talking about fine margins, uh, one way or the other. Oh, right, let me get to the and men. Isaiah, and yeah. Isaiah James was shooting way beyond. <laughs> right, it didn't bother her anyway. <laughs> and it, it didn't bother her any. She she wasn't stepping on the line. She was a couple of feet behind the three point line when she was launching those threes. She was more <laughs> she's probably more worried about the sideline than she yeah, was uh, exactly. the three point line. The sideline as, 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 uh, <laughs> Was a foot on the line for a three point shot. <laughs> All right, let me let me get your your thoughts on. Uh, is there something that you can relate? Obviously, we know that eighty three had to win the a- ACC tournament to get in. But we know that your team was really good all year. Uh, just injuries and circumstance put that put them in that position. But is there something else that this team, uh, you know, reminds you of with your eighty three team? Uh, the never giving up spirit, you know, and uh, that, you know, reminds me, you know, like you're on a, they're on a mission, you know, and, 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 and we were on a mission. We, we, they have a lot to prove and, and people with us, they didn't know what was going to happen. You know, they nobody, we kind of won the hearts of people as we, as we progressed in mm-hmm. the tournament, you know, they have a moniker, why not us? You know, we, you know, they're totally kind of different. You know, people were surprised back then what we did. You know, we were the first team to win the tournament 
or get into the final four with 10 losses. Right. They're the first team to do it with 14 losses. 14 losses. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, double-figure losses is similar. But um, we uh, – they're beating teams. And, you know, we – our games were – that's why they call us the cardiac pack. Our games were tens. We won by one. We went to double overtimes. And it, it was just a totally different uh, vibe, you know, with the cardiac pack as opposed to, you know, this, this NC State team. All right. But there is a similarity, uh, it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, between your win over Pepperdine uh, early. I think it might have been the – I think it was your first game of the NCAA tournament – uh, and Michael O'Connell's banked in three to beat, uh, not to beat, but to send Virginia into overtime, then the Virginia game into overtime. Uh, isn't Wasn't there another kind of, not maybe miracle, but an unlikely banked in shot that kept the game going? Oh, yeah. Oh, Thurl Bailey shot and Kozel McQueen's rebound against uh, Pepperdine to put the game into overtime. We went to double overtime in that game. Right. Um, Sydney Lowe fouling out and George McLean coming in the game and, you know, um, running the point guard and getting the ball, but Thurl Bailey on the break. Yeah, I mean, you know, that Michael O'Connor shot was a great big shot. <laughs> um, that was in the ACC tournament. But right. most of our histrionics happened in the NCAA tournament. You know, um, in the ACC tournament, we kind of, we won out. We played against Ralph Sampson. There was no last-second buzzer shots or anything like that. Only in the tournament, in the ACC tournament, I mean, in the NCAA tournament, excuse me, that they were, um, you know, those uh, cardiac pack games where people were, thought we were dead. We came back to life. You know, we gave people heart attacks watching us <laughs> and listening to us and that type of thing. This team is kind of – they won five games in a row, um, and they are um, – you know, winning in the tournament, they, they made it to the final four. They're beating team. They beat Duke. Oh gosh. You know, they beat Oakland. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. They um, beat Marquette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They beat Marquette. I mean, and some of the teams that we faced to go in the tournament were, you know, we faced Ralph Sampson. We we had we had to beat, beat Michael Jordan and Sam Perkins and uh, you know uh, Elijah Juwan and you know Sydney Green that played for UNLV. Yeah. Great player. You know, that, you know they, there were some, uh, you know, talented uh, All-Americans. And uh, I remember one of the uh, writers said, this team has no All-Americans, but they have the heart of all of America. You know, and, and, and that's why people endear themselves to that team, uh, uh, that 83 team. And this team, that why not us, um, they have captured the, the hearts of a lot yeah. of America. No question. It reminds me of. Yeah, uh, Jay Williams today on ESPN said DJ Burns is America's big man. Uh, I'll let you go here, but, um, I mean, how do you sum up the DJ Burns experience? For all of it, not just the basketball, uh, but the personality, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a great personality um, and a great player. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's a – everybody loves a fun big guy. Like Shaq. (laughs) Everybody likes a big guy that – you know, nobody likes an angry big guy. They like a guy that love, you know, they can joke around with, like big teddy bear. Right. You know, you see Shaq, you know, in the NBA, he makes fun of himself. He's a vicarious guy. And G.J. Burns reminds me of him. You know, he, you know he'll, he'll hug anybody. He'll, you know, he'll, he'll dance with anybody on a video. Yeah. He loves the fans. He, he plays it up. And people love that about a, a, a big guy with a soft heart and is a teddy bear and, you know, he's just a, a awesome guy. You know, I, I, I had a chance to talk to him before he came to NC State and uh, on a phone call and, you know, and, you know, uh, I might have helped him, you know, come here. Right. You know, so it's uh, it's beautiful to watch him and this team and they're, they're running through him. And, you know, um, I love to see it. He's just a great guy. He is. Uh, as you are, Ernie Myers. Uh, you'll be in Cleveland with the with the ladies as they pursue a national championship, uh, and then once you guys are done with that, we'll see you in Phoenix as the men pursue theirs. Uh, oh, absolutely! I mean, we leave tomorrow, and uh, you know our game is Friday, and the men's game is Saturday. And you know, as the women, we win a national championship. Our game will be on Sunday, I think. Yep. And the men's game will be on uh, Monday. Uh, on Monday, and if we win. I'm flying. <laughs> from Cleveland to uh, to uh, Phoenix to to watch the men win their national championship. 
It's a great time to be a state fan. I appreciate your time, Ernie. I appreciate uh, you, man. Anytime, man. You, thank you, you so much, Adam. Go. I love your show. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Ernie Myers here at Pack Ernie Myers on Twitter. Yeah, that that look. There are similarities, and then there are drastic differences between these two teams. The similarities, obviously, they each had to win the ACC tournament to advance. Um, and the other similarity is that they were both really good teams. The state team wasn't through injury. They just couldn't figure it out. How do we put this all together to where it looks like it's supposed to? That state team in 83 was legitimately good. Legitimately good. Uh, this has been uh, a great run, uh, but we're, we're not done. I remember last week uh, talking to our, uh, our friend Chris Lee. So last week, we spoke to Chris Lee from WRAL-TV5, and he informed us that he was just getting out of the shower. Today, (laughs) Chris is about to board a plane to come back home uh, after NC State's, I'm not going to call it shocking, because I thought they would win the game going into the game. Uh, At this point, you'd be foolish to think anything less of NC State. So Chris Lee of WRAL-TV5, Take me inside the locker room and the aftermath of all of that madness. What was that like? It was uh, amazing to witness, and it's been amazing to witness this entire time. Um, You can kind of get a feeling a lot of times about a team uh, before they start winning uh, something big. And NC State this entire time, they feel like they're focused. They feel like they're together. Uh, it, it feels like they are loose, um, you know, not that Duke wasn't, um, you know, loose or they weren't together, but just NC State just had it just a little bit more. And you can tell that they, they want it a little bit more. I think, um, you know, Duke's issue uh, yesterday and in a few other times during this year was it, it feels like they walk in thinking we're Duke, we're going to win instead of, we're Duke. We have to play our best so we so we can win. And NC State took advantage of that. And I, I do think that uh, teams have severely underestimated this team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, throughout this entire run, um, and they've come and smacked people in the mouth all throughout. And and here they are going to the Final Four. It is an incredible, incredible time to be alive here in the 919 area code. Chris Lee, WRAL TV5 Sports is joining us here. Uh, NC State will be heading to Phoenix for the Final Four. Uh, DJ Burns said something after the game that, like, I don't know what to make of it, uh, but I, I guess it was in the on court interview. And he talked about nobody showing up late anymore. At some point, NC State got down to business too, right? They lost four in a row heading into the ACC tournament. They weren't exactly blowing Louisville's doors off either on that Tuesday night. But at some point, they had to get serious about things. Yeah, and I think um, I've I've done, I've talked with you, and I've also talked with a few others. Um, I think I said this on your show the other day, but essentially, this they this team has admitted you know, they have needed to get to know each other. They needed to get to know the system. Uh, seven folks transferred right. in with a freshman uh, that came in. So this is, you know, almost a completely different team uh, from last year. You basically still have uh, DJ Burns and, you know, Breon Pass and, and a few others uh, that's on the team from, from last year. But really this is like a, a whole new bunch of guys uh, learning Kevin Keaton's system, what he wants of them and everything like that. And so it's, it's taken them until March to really figure it out, really understand uh, who they are within that. And I think also just uh, to build their confidence and not only themselves, but each other. And so this group really trusts each other. You could tell that there's real love between, um, you know, this team, you know, I'm sure Adam, you've covered teams before in the past and you you can sit, tell like, yep. Uh, this guy doesn't really like this guy over here. This guy doesn't really is not really fond of this guy, and that can that can show on the court, the ice, the field, you know, wherever it's at. 
and uh, NC State, this, this group is all together. They love each other. And same thing with the, with the staff. Uh, it, it really does feel – this word is thrown around a lot. It really does feel like a family there. Final thing for Chris Lee, WRAL TV5 Sports here on the Adam Gold Show. Uh, DJ Burns after the game last night was like uh, living it up with the band, uh, you know, taking pictures with like security personnel in the arena. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much of that you saw underneath the uh, American, well, I guess it was American Airlines Center in Dallas. I don't know how much of that you saw, but my guess is that the, the final four, that stage was made for DJ Burns. Absolutely, and I didn't get a chance to see a lot of that just because, you know, you have to – the media, we, we are always in this hurry-up-and-wait type yes. of situation. So wherever you are, you're just kind of there. And I was, um, you know, waiting to get inside a Duke locker room and then, you know, went over to NC State. But, um, you know, it's it, he's definitely a rock star. I mean, I saw last night where uh, Nikola Jokic <laughs> yep. was talking about him saying that he's a DJ Burns fan. Um, he's done so much to raise his stock. You know, I don't I don't know if he is – uh, an NBA player, but he's he's going give, to give himself a look just off of this run alone. And I think one of the things that I, uh, that was very interesting about this, he always turned it back to Kevin Keats. Um, you know, they were – everybody's – and I want to make sure we give Kevin Keats some love because just a few weeks ago there's a lot of people who were calling for his job. Right. And, you know, he's shown what he can do uh, if he can have a fresh start. And remember, he was – took over a program that was under federal investigation and had, you know, four years of, of that going on. Uh, Jalen LeCue decided not to go. Josh Hall decided not to go. Robert Dillingham flipped, decided to go to Kentucky and bounce, was bounced in the first round. Like he's, he's missed out on huge recruits, a lot of because of the perception and things going around NC State. And now um, that he's been given time, he's shown what he can do with, uh, with what he has. He was an absolute rock star with the portal last year. And the team all talked about the confidence they felt from their coach. They were down at the half. They said normally they get yelled at if they're down at the half. Kevin Keats walked into the locker room smiling and laughing, saying, we're about to win this game. And that, <laughs> that's what changed the game around for NC State because they, they came out with the belief. And so we hear so much. The team takes on uh, the personality of their head coach. And Kevin Keats is a, is a cool customer. He's cool under pressure, and he knows uh, what to do. And his yeah. team – has been like that the last three weeks. They certainly played like the much more comfortable team in the second mm -hmm. half against Duke. Mm -hmm. Duke had, uh, I was getting 2018 UVA versus UMBC vibes from Duke. In the, <laughs> I really was in the second half. Duke looked like everything was a panic, uh, e even with a you know, six, seven-point lead. Six, I guess six-point lead looked like everything was a panic. And NC State just looked like they were very, very comfortable exactly where they were. Chris Lee, WRAL TV5 Sports, joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Safe trip back, man. Uh, we'll hang in Phoenix. Uh, I won't be in Phoenix, but you can hang with Pat oh. Walter and uh, Casey Hentz. But uh, I definitely will be listening for sure. Oh, all right, man. Well, uh, I, I, I miss you already. We'll, we'll hang a lot in uh, April, May, and, and hopefully June as well. Oh, so, that's right. We have uh, hockey. Yes. We'll, we'll see each other a lot. <laughs> All right, man. Peace. Take care. All right. So, uh, Chris Lee um, and I, yes, we will. Uh, gosh, there's a lot going on. There is. Seven times. Seven games left in the hurricane season. Mm -hmm. Last three games uh, at home are Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Then they close out the season with four on the road. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday. And then the playoffs likely will begin either Saturday or Sunday at PNC Arena. And then, you know, 20 some odd games over a roughly two month span. I can't wait. There's a lot. So excited. When will I sleep? Don't know. Well, that's... Don't know, but this is also one of those things that is okay. Yes. Right? Sacrifices. It's a better. These are good problems to have. Mm -hmm. uh, but we leave for the Final Four on uh, Wednesday night, or uh, Wednesday evening, and Thursday and Friday will be coming to you live, uh, and I assume Saturday, but who knows. Uh, but certainly Thursday and Friday will be coming to you live from Phoenix. 
uh, for those two shows. Uh, all right, quick break. We'll come back. We'll stretch and we will place bets because it's what we can do now. Next. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. NC Medicaid is for more people like me. Adults who don't have children. People who serve. People who do the heavy lifting. Child care teachers. Full health care coverage at low or no cost. Doctor's visits, emergency rooms, and prescriptions. So if you applied before and didn't get it, apply again. NC Medicaid covers more people than ever before. NC Medicaid is for more people. See if you qualify at medicaid.nc.gov. Are you taking care of someone on Medicare? Navigating Medicare can be overwhelming. You're not alone. The NC Department of Insurance SHIP program can help you figure out what steps to take and when. SHIP counselors can answer your questions. Visit ncshiip.com or call toll-free at 855-408-1212. SHIP provides free, unbiased help in all 100 counties. Projects supported by grants from the Administration for Community Living. Contents do not necessarily represent official views of nor an endorsement by ACL, HHS, or the U.S. government. The Body Armor State Games are coming to Charlotte this June. Registration is open to athletes of all ages and skill levels in 25 different sports. The Body Armor State Games features 13,000 athletes and 700 teams. Don't miss out on North Carolina's largest sports festival of the year. Visit BodyArmorStateGames.org today. The Body Armor State Games are proud to partner with Truist, Harris Teeter, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Fair housing is more than just a celebration in April. For North Carolina's realtors, it's an everyday standard. For the 56,000 realtors across our state, we embrace and support fair housing to stamp out discrimination in all forms. As realtors, we believe fairness is worth fighting for, and we won't stop until the fight is won. Celebrating Fair Housing Month, North Carolina Realtors. We open doors to everyone. Paid for by North Carolina Realtors. It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a layback Sunday afternoon you wish would never end. The homemade taste of bluebell and good friends gathered round. The good old days are being made right now. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream. A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made right now. Look for Bluebell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Having health insurance is important. So, if you or anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check your mail for a renewal form from your state. Complete the form and mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose Medicaid or CHIP, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Keep your family covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. All across North Carolina, our children are struggling. Rates of depression and anxiety in youth are skyrocketing, and our schools and communities don't have enough resources to support our kids' mental health. At NC Child, we are advocating for solutions that address the youth mental health crisis and set our children up for a lifetime of success. Learn more about how we're creating a North Carolina where every child can reach their full potential at ncchild.org. NC Child, the voice for North Carolina's children. This is Adam Gold. Dan on Twitter, who you got? Robert Plant or Elvis Presley? That is actually very difficult because I don't want to disrespect Elvis Presley. I think it's Elvis. It's very, very close. And that is an incredible question. The Adam Gold Show. Playing the best of uh, 1983's hits.
Yes. The Adam Gold Show, number three. This was in the final four. Yep. Or top four, I should number say. Number three in the Billboard charts, Irene Cara. Did you, ever, did you see the movie Flashdance? I did. Mm-hmm. What a, an amazing movie. I know. The 80s had some good movies. Holy cow, what a great movie. Yeah. Uh, Hot Lunch, great song. Just leave it at that. <laughs> it's a great song. Uh, all right, uh, lots to do. We got to stretch. We got to place bets. I'm not sure which order I would rather do it in, but this is the way we always do it. We'll stretch first. It's always good to get a little stretch in. And what is that? It is. <laughs> yeah, you, well. you, you're, a, you're a gym rat. Yes. Do you stretch after you work out? I should. Honestly. No, I should. Do you stretch before? Oh, no, definitely not before. See? No. You're supposed to stretch Some, before and after. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. But I'm such a nerd that I've listened to podcasts and stuff that actually say there's better stretching for bet other things. But, yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> but, no, I do not stretch, and I know yeah. I should yeah. because, yeah, I snap, crackle, and pop a lot, and I think stretching would be helpful. Do, do you cool down? I no. walk out of the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah, literally exactly. my cool down. <laughs> exactly. Is that? Yeah, I'm, I'm so guilty. glad you do it the right way. <laughs> exactly. Well, there are things that you could do the right way or the wrong way because today is April Fools. So do not let anyone prank you today. I am letting you know, PSA, it is April 1st. People will try to be tricky. And uh, what I like to do at the beginning of the month is talk about things to look forward to. So in April, First off, sports. This month is awesome for sports. The women's final four is Friday. The championship is Sunday. Men's is Saturday. Their championship is uh, next Monday. Then we have the Masters starting on the 11th. NBA playoffs is the 20th. The Stanley Cup playoffs is the 22nd. And the NFL draft is the 25th. <laughs> so a lot. Awesome. A lot going on. All of on. that is awesome. What was that about sleep? Yeah. Not, um, not happening. Yeah, no, it's not. So, <laughs> also on TV, there are some things if you like to sit down and watch TV instead of go to the gym. Uh, this looks like something you might like. Welcome to Wrexham. Season 3 oh. hits FX on the 18th. So. Of, of this month? Yes. I haven't even finished season 2 yet. Well, there I'm you go. I'm only like 7 episodes into season 2. <laughs> well, I got work season, to do. Yes, season 3 Can with I, all that time you've got. Can I watch them all on the plane? <laughs> yes. So season 3 is the 18th. Uh, also, there's something called the Bon Jovi story. Quote, thank you, good night. The Bon Jovi story. All I didn't right, realize then. that was a thing. That hits Hulu on the 26th. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, if you have children. Spinoff called Knuckles. That's also on the 26th. So, And something we can all look forward to, at least most of us if you partake national beer day is april 7th remember me telling you about yes. the beer <laughs> the pizza beer so yeah that's coming out april 7th so there you go also national pet day is the 11th oh so i hope to see all kinds of pet pets on twitter we need to see that but yes yeah so Always. there you go now however we need to play some bets. Place your bets. Place your bets. Do we? Uh, I bet you slice into the woods a hundred bucks. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slide. Yeah. Okay, you can owe me. I owe you one. All right, not bad. Was this a productive week? I don't remember what I picked. I don't. Oh man. I I did have uh, I did I had stayed on the money line. Oh, there you go. Plus 240. I did, I did have that. That was not a bet that I placed here, but I did on one of my apps now yeah. that we can legally do that in North exactly. Carolina. <laughs> that, that's where I had it. <laughs> so, yes. We didn't know they were going to play uh, because they had to beat Marquette on Friday. Right. So, yes, exactly. I mean, Carolina messed up a three-way parlay that would have hit oh, if they just beat no. Alabama. Yeah. All I needed to do was win. I know. I had I... State to cover and Duke to cover. Oh. They were both underdogs. Well, they both I, won outright. I also had one where Kyle Filipowski got plus uh, 15 yeah. or over points. Yeah, can't foul out to get 15 points when you've got 11. But today I'm going to do some baseball because my Chicago Cubbies are going to be home taking on the Colorado Rockies. Ian Happ had a happy day here recently. See what I did there? Ah, so I'm picking yes. him to, <laughs> to record two plus hits, plus 220. All right, I'm going to start with the women's basketball Elite Eight match tonight between LSU and Iowa. 
The Tigers are a slight underdog in this match. I do think they're going to end Caitlin Clark's season again. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go LSU and under 168 and a half at plus 265. Okay. Oh, the, the matchup again. I can't wait for this one. Yep. Florida Panthers are going to be in Toronto taking on the Maple Leaves. I don't think it's too far-fetched to think Matthew Kachuk will be an anytime goal scorer, and he's plus 200. So, yes. <laughs> Excuse? I know. Matthew Kachuk, anytime goal scorer, plus 200? Okay. He's not a huge goal scorer, but he is a goal scorer. Enough to be good with that. That so. is uh, that is a bit odd. Uh, all right. You choose. Mm-hmm. I think Toronto is going to beat Florida tonight. Yeah. At home. Toronto needs... Uh, They've been struggling right? a little bit. I think the Islanders are going to win in Philadelphia tonight. So yeah. I like if you take those two together, it's plus 330. That oh, seems yeah. like a lot of value. Or do I just do Detroit on the road at Tampa? The Red Wings have Ooh. to get a win. Otherwise, it's pretty much over. Yeah, but it's Tampa. Yeah, Tampa's in a good spot right now. I'm going to go with the Red Wings at plus 160 Ooh, just to get an outright risky. winner on the road. Okay, that's risky. Yeah. And uh, my last one, Braden Point. Why not? He's he's playing again in that game. So anytime goal scorer, Braden Point. Plus 150. All right, one more. The Hornets home to Boston. No way the Hornets win this outright, right? Plus 1040? Get out of here. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. The unthinkable should now be thought of, and it could also end up with a huge payout. Hey, it's Victoria Vodnecker here for BetMGM, and right now we have the biggest Cinderella story coming from North Carolina in the big college basketball tournament, which means you can feel even better about supporting a local team and hopefully winning some wagers from it. This is the perfect time to give it a try because you can get $150 in bonus bets just by making your first $5 wager and using code VICTORIA150. Whether you win or lose, you still get $150 in bonus bets. Plus, when using the BetMGM app, you'll have options like intense same-game parlays that I have done multiple times in this tournament, live bets, prop bets, and BetMGM even offers fun daily promotions that keeps things interesting. So for $5, you'll get $150 to experiment with in bonus bets by using code VICTORIA150. See BetMGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. North Carolina only. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.com. Direct Auto Insurance is for uncompromisers. The people who refuse to make trade-offs in life. Like Kelly, when her old car insurance got so expensive that she couldn't afford to drive anymore, do you think she started carrying her groceries for miles? No, but she did find Direct Auto savings that allowed her to drive instead of compromise. With savings of up to 25%, you too can stop compromising and keep driving. Get a quote today at directauto.com. Savings based on applied discounts and will vary. Terms apply. How you buy can affect price. National General Group, Winston Salem. Let's party like it's 1874 at the City of Sanford's 150th birthday bash happening Saturday, April 6th at Sanford Fairgrounds, kicking off at 1030 a.m. This is a free event with family-friendly performances and much more. Visit Sanford150.com for all the details. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Were you forced to get a nosebleed mortgage rate in the past year? Loan Pronto is here to rescue you. Hey, it's Dennis Cox. Listen, if your mortgage rate is over seven, you're going to be in heaven with Loan Pronto's zero cost refi. You can cut your house payment by hundreds of dollars with zero closing costs. Rates have come down, so you can say goodbye to that bad loan you got stuck with. Loan Pronto's now got APRs with fixed rates in the fives. One couple just did this and saved over $550 a month with no appraisal and closed in 10 days. So, 
Don't live with that stupid rate a day longer. You can lock in at a lower rate now with no cost and very little paperwork. Loan Pronto, your easy button for lower rates and no closing cost loans. Call now and see how much lower you can get your house payment. Refi now and you can even skip your next two house payments altogether. 919-381-1760. 919-381-1760. LoanPronto.com. 919-381-1760. NMLS 161781. Subject to lender approval. Equal housing lender. Sound station and security. Your automotive and audio experts car audio car video home theater wheels and tires and so much more plus did you know sound station and security offers full service for your vehicle alignments inspection oil changes window tinting and custom exhaust and with a variety of financing options sound station and security can help you get what you need today two locations downtown smithfield and on glenwood avenue in raleigh sound station and security visit myhotsound.com this hour on the Triangle Sports Leader is brought to you by the Ritchie Law Firm Injury Lawyers. You can feel the madness! Go to gotbrian.com. That's gotbrian.com. WCMC HD1 Holly Springs. Take us with you on radio, web, app, Alexa, and YouTube. 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. 3-1 pitch. That is absolutely crushed. Trouble up is fair. It's gone. Are you kidding me? Garrett Pennington with the three-run jack to left field. And the Wolfpack have earned the sweep. You have got to be kidding me. Pennington comes home and gets mobbed. Another bath at home plate for another hero for NC State. I mean, isn't it embarrassing all the winning? Can that happen? It was a sweep of, what was it, Notre Dame for the Wolfpack? Yeah. My gosh. This is amazing. Women are in the Final Four. The men are in the Final Four. State sweeping a baseball series in conference play. Like, what else happened? <laughs> they win more. Uh, what, what? Which of their teams just won? I think, uh, was it? Swimming and diving, or the, oh. I mean, they, I don't know. It's one of their, uh, one of uh, wrestling is, but there, what a machine. Yes. You can't, uh, you can't beat them. You can't stop them. You can only hope to contain NC State at this point. <laughs> uh, gymnastics. Great. It's right. Oh, okay. Gymnastics just won. It's a good thing Rusty down the hall is listening to this program. Yes. Clearly, he needs more to do. It's, <laughs> it's helpful. Clearly, Rusty. Rusty needs more, <laughs> more to occupy his time. <laughs> I say that so facetiously. I wish people knew. Right. I yes. wish people knew how this place would fall apart without Rusty Helser doing stuff. Uh, so yes, they they uh, the gymnastics team uh, is a uh, I think an ACC champ. Amazing. All right, uh, tons of stuff to do. Monty Tao, who joined us last week after State or two weeks ago when State won the ACC tournament, uh, Monty Tao is going to join us. Uh, in about 15 minutes, so let's get right to it with the wall of sound. The wall of sound is a function of this studio. There's no doubt. Man, about the it. biggest mistake you can make is give me your phone number. Biggest mistake you can make. Although, yeah, well, there's still Twitter. There's always ways to contact people. Uh, that is true. Um, I'm going to go to Twitter at some point. Uh, and just read some cool things. People are really excited about what's gone on, and they should be. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk to the or listen to the head coach Kevin Keats here in the. This is yeah. Wall of Sound. The music's already playing. Adam, stop. Uh, all right. So there's a lot going on. Obviously, NC State is now into their ninth consecutive win after closing the season with four consecutive losses. They have won nine, nine straight first ever team with 14 losses to make it to a final four and here's Keats on his biggest takeaway I think the biggest blessing is they they've stayed true to who they are you know obviously you know when you go through a season there are going to be a lot of ups and downs Um, number one you got to win every type of game to advance Um, but there are going to be some emotions like we, we started off five and one in our conference we lost our last four games they're going to always be some adversity. And, I, I, you know, what these guys have strung together games, they've never wavered in their belief. 
Yeah, when when Kevin Keith says you have to win all different kinds of games, he includes a thorough, thorough beating of a local rival that has had your number for the most part over the last two decades. Granted, State has won some big games. Who can forget the Mark Gottfried pat on the rear end of Mike Krzyzewski after the Wolfpack won that game, right? Whatever year that was. Well, pat on the uh, pat on the derriere as you were walking by the handshake line. But this was this was a beating. This was outclassing Duke in every way, shape, and form. And I know, look, I don't think it matters as much to the Blue Devils that it was state, but this just that it happened in the manner it happened. But man, the Wolfpacker just playing great basketball. DJ Horn uh, thanks his head coach. All the the ups and downs we had in our season, and when it, it could have been easy to quit, I felt like he was the main one that kind of kept us all together and kept the, you know the outlook on our whole season uh, very positive and uh, gave us a lot of confidence going into that ACC tournament. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, all the last month and a half, as we all saw the season kind of fizzling out, knowing that it was going to take five wins in five days to get to the NCAA tournament. Kevin Keats continuous, you know, positive outlook on things was almost like, dude, what, what are you doing? Right. Where is this coming from? This optimism. So, and I'm not saying he saw things that we couldn't. Obviously he did. But it's so easy to just go, well, that's just a coach being a coach. I mean, you might be right. But all of those things basically came together. Everything he was looking for kind of came together. They're on this run, having a great time, looking very at ease with where they are. Just, it is a, it has been a remarkable, remarkable run. Uh, all right, now to, if you don't believe me, Jay Billis of ESPN puts it into a higher category. You know, I was a freshman in 1983 when NC State won the national championship, but that wasn't as amazing as this is. NC State this year was 17 and 14 heading into the ACC tournament, and they were playing on Tuesday, and they had to win five games. It wasn't even a thought of any rational basketball person that the Wolfpack would win the ACC tournament. And they did it. Mike O'Connell hits, what, what a 40-footer with time expiring uh, against Virginia after a, a missed free throw. They're down three, and he banks it in. And they go to overtime, wind up winning the game. And that was in the semifinals. And they beat North Carolina and move on to the tournament. And you're thinking, they're going to be emotionally and physically drained. No, nobody can do that and just bounce back. And then they got a Thursday game and they beat Texas Tech. You know, they get to the Sweet 16. Then they're in the Elite Eight, and they're playing Duke, a team they had beaten in the ACC tournament. And you're thinking, well, it's got to end sometime. And it never ends. <laughs> uh, there's still two more games to play. But yeah, I hadn't thought about it in a historical context outside of NC State lore. And it's a pretty impressive run. Yeah, different way to look it's at it. It's a pretty impressive run. Um, so fun. Right, real quick before we get to uh, the women's side of this. It is incredible what the NCAA tournament does. It is even more baffling to me that people want to mess with it. Now, I get simply doubling the amount of games we have in the first four. I get that because I don't think you are fundamentally altering the tournament. You're basically balancing it out. But if 
I mean, if they legitimately expand, then they're just messing with something that doesn't need to be messed with. But boy, watching this run, it has been absolutely awesome. All right. I'm not sure you remember this, but NC State won a women's basketball game earlier yesterday. They did. They beat Texas, and here's how it sounded on ESPN. Cleveland, you better get ready. The Wolfpack is coming. Back to the Final Four for the first Yeah, we can't hear you anymore, so uh, be quiet. We can't, can't hear you at all anymore. All right, another Elite Eight match in the women's tournament is a rematch of last year's LSU-Iowa title match. Angel Reese, she was the star for LSU on the game plan for Caitlin Clark. Last year, um, the scouting report was just to contain her as best as we can and not let the surrounding players score as much as they as, as they could. So we're going to do the same thing again this year. I mean, she's scoring 30 when they win. She's scoring 30 when they lose. So it's a win-win-lose situation with the, with the, with this. So we're just going to have to not allow those other players to score. That makes sense. I mean, unless, unless Caitlin Clark's going to score 60. Yeah. If you limit the other players. Yeah. Um, Iowa was a very good defensive team from what I watched mm-hmm. uh, throughout this tournament. And Caitlin Clark is obviously one of the all-timers in the history of the sport. Uh, now, I had this conversation. I'm just going to leave the uh, the person out of it. I had this conversation about, don't like trash talk. Don't want to see Angel Reese do whatever Angel... Well, okay. Uh, here's Angel Reese on Talking Trash. I think people just take it like... We hate each other. Like, me and Caitlin Clark don't hate each other. Like, I want everybody to understand that it's just a super competitive game. And, like, when I get between those lines, like, we're not we're not friends. We're not buddies. I'm going to talk trash to you. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get in your head the whole entire game. But I, I don't think people really realize that. And that's fine. Um, I, I'll, take the, I'll take the villain role. I'll take – the, the hit for it, but I know we're going women's basketball, and if this is the way we're going to do it, then this is the way we're going to do it. You like it or you don't. And Caitlin Clark's a trash talker, too. Yeah. That she just it's is. Part and of the sport. It's awesome. Yeah. And by the way, tonight, by the way, it's like a 7-15 game. We might have close to anywhere from 8 to 10 million people will be watching oh, this yeah. game tonight. Absolutely. I'll be one. Yes. Woo! It is. It should be a blast. When we come back, a national champion for NC State, Monty Tao, friend of the program now. Uh, We will talk to him about what he has seen from his Wolfpack. Next. Rally to boom. Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. You're always close to the Canes with 99.9 The Fan. 47 seconds left in overtime. Jarvis now with speed. Drop for Natchez. He scores! Natchez in overtime. And the Canes win it 3-2. Count on us to bring you every Canes game night. And the latest Canes news from insider Adam Gold. Your official home for the Carolina Hurricanes. 99.9 The Fan. The Triangle Sports Leader. Hey, it's Adam Gold from my friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book, with a reminder that busted brackets don't matter if you've got FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because every game is its own bracket. Every game presents another opportunity for you to feel good about yourself, and you can bet on everything from the money line to totals to which team will cut down the nets, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And right now, FanDuel.com, promo code ADAMGOLD will get you $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose when you place your first $5 wager. FanDuel.com, promo code ADAMGOLD to get you started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Bonuses issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Marcus is a connoisseur of anything that's free, so he was happy to read the disclaimer on TurboTax Free Edition. Roughly 37% of taxpayers qualify... 
Form 1040 and limited credits only. See how at TurboTax.com. <laughs> That's me. File your taxes 100% free with TurboTax Free Edition and get your max refund guaranteed. See if you qualify to file for free at TurboTax.com. See max refund guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. The time is now, folks. Dennis Cox here with my friends over at Law Tigers. Law Tigers, Tobacco Road, Harley-Davidson, Shiny Side Paint, and your Carolina Hurricanes. They're all teaming up to give the ultimate Canes fan a custom Hurricanes 2023 Harley-Davidson soft tow motorcycle. But we're in the 11th hour, folks. It's going to be given away on April 5th, which means you need to enter now. Go to Caniacs. Bike.com. That's KaniaxBike.com for your chance to win this custom painted beauty of a bike. Again, KaniaxBike.com. Enter now. It's bow time. <laughs> Something new just dropped at Bojangles. Take the bold taste of a crispy golden chicken supreme that's been seasoned to perfection, then add dill pickles, Carolina gold barbecue sauce, and a toasted bun that's great on the go. What do you get? You get a Bose Bird Dog. In fact, you can grab two of them for five bucks. So when you're on the go, headed to practice, or need a snack, grab a Bose Bird Dog. Hurry in before they're gone. Available for a limited time. It's bow time. There's no time like bow time, but sometimes it's go time. No time to stop. Introducing Bojangles' new Bird Dog, a seasoned to perfection Bojangles Chicken Supreme, dill pickles, Carolina Gold Barbecue Sauce, all on a toasted bun. Great on the go. Try two bird dogs for just $5 or a two bird dog combo for just $8. Hurry, Bo's bird dogs are available for a limited time only. When you're hungry for flavor and value, it's Bo time. Serta Pro Painters knows how important your home is to you. That's why they're focused on helping you bring a fresh color to your home. And you know you can trust Serta Pro Painters to get the job done right, even in those hard-to-reach places. I'm Adam Gold. I had them do my house one time, and we have vaulted ceilings. They did it all. And each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. In other words, they live right here in our community. You can schedule your free estimate online at SertaPro.com. That's Serta with a C. Choose happy. Choose Serta Pro Painters. This is Adam Gold. Anti vax, anti sax. Who's going to say no to that on the campaign trail? You can put that on a bumper sticker. You can slap that on the podium when Aaron Rodgers is at the campaign rally. You're not going to be a football player for the Jets and be on the ticket and campaign. You can't uh, do both. The Adam Gold Show. Michael Jackson is all over the uh, 83 billboard chart. I mean, for crying out loud, the whole Thriller album. I know. Is, which uh, is amazing. But... Is in there. So yes. there's like two songs in the top 10. This one wasn't in the top 10, but the other two, with Billie Jean and Beat It, were both top 10 songs in 1983, the last time the NC State Wolfpack Won a national championship. Monty Tao won a championship in 1974. Feels like we just spoke with Monty last week, but that's what I said before. Don't give me your number because I'm going to call again. Uh, and the Wolfpack keep winning. So as long as they keep winning, I bet you keep answering the phone. I sure will, particularly a call from you. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to keep up with all of them right now. There's quite a bit of activity going on on those chat groups and that type of thing. But uh, definitely enjoying talking to you, keeping the Wolfpack dream alive. And uh, nine straight elimination games. I mean, these Jeez. guys are doing stuff that nobody's ever done, I think. I don't know. It seems like they are. And uh, they're doing it in an amazing way, amazing fashion, really convincingly. They're not sneaking up on anybody no. now. I think earlier people thought that, you know, they were kind of a Cinderella. But they've, they've shown they can play with anybody. And uh, they continue to play along with three other teams. Yeah, DJ Horn uh, responded to that. We're, we're not Cinderella. I think he said it after the Marquette game. We're not oh. Cinderella, and he's right. They aren't. They are not Cinderella. I think we, um, when we spoke last week, this is this is, look, getting to a Final Four is what it is. It's a separate entity because the tournament is so crazy. Uh, but we thought that they were good, like in the middle of the season, and we they just couldn't figure out a way to put it all together. So what do you think was the important thing, other than D.J. Burns being dominant, what is the important thing that we should take away from the way they beat Duke yesterday? Well, I just think the way they beat Duke is they hung in there, weren't playing that well, and then Burns and Horn took over the game. But they, they continue to get help from everybody on the team. O'Connell does good. The Aragas does good. 
Uh, Taylor comes in and makes a shot. Middlebrook, they're all playing uh, their roles. And I don't know how they were earlier in the year. I, I'm a distance away, so I, I'm not, I don't follow them probably as closely as I should. But I know, I know they weren't winning every game like they're doing right now. So I just think there's a combination of things. Uh, they, were a, they were a group that hadn't been together much before, right. what I see from the outside. And I think the more they play now, have they played 40 games now? How many games have they played? Uh, they're no, not quite forty. For, for yeah. <laughs> they are, uh, they were seventeen and fourteen entering, so they are yeah. now twenty-one and fourteen. Thirty-five games. Okay, so they're they're playing upwards 35, 40 games like a you know a pro league, <laughs> and uh, they're on a run where they've obviously, like we talked about last week, they're they're obviously a talented bunch, maybe more talented than people uh, thought, you know. Yeah, and uh, they just come at you from every place on the floor. Uh, they're not turning the ball over. Uh, they're right. not beating themselves, and just they're scoring the ball. I think their defense has been better. I don't know yes. what statistics point out, but it seems like their scores have been a little bit lower, and that's mainly on the defensive side. So just uh, they're playing basketball, man. They're playing to win, and they check the egos at the door, and whoever does the best, they're all happy for them, and. They just want to keep the year going. When you're on a team like that, you just want the season to keep going. You don't want it to ever end. And now they're going up against three teams in the Final Four that are in the same position. So it'll be a fantastic weekend, and hopefully the Wolfpack, both men and women, can uh, keep their seasons going and get to that championship game and win it all. Monty Tao is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show, uh, national champion from 1974. Uh, I I don't re- remember what the final four was like and what an accomplishment that was, you know, back now fifty years ago. But the making a final four in the in this modern sixty four sixty eight team seated field, just making it to the final four is a championship uh, in and of itself. Uh, how do you look at it? How did you look at it fifty years ago? Yeah, it's a, it's a resume resume maker for sure. Just making it to the final four, but uh, they remember the champions more than they do the people that didn't win that championship. Right. There's something about winning the championship, no matter whether it was 50 years ago or whether it was last year, uh, it's something special. And four teams make it to the final four, and that's a big deal, and it should be a big deal. Uh, I know our mindset going into the final four is we weren't happy to be playing in the final four. Uh, don't get me wrong. We were happy, but we weren't happy right. just to be there. Uh, what our goal was and our mindset, and Coach Sloan really backed this totally, is we're not going to be satisfied with anything less than a national championship. So I, I think all those teams are wanting to uh, obviously make it to the Final Four, but really the big deal is to, is to put that championship banner up and say you won a national championship. And all four teams have a shot at it. I don't know how you can pick a favorite. I guess Connecticut would be the one that would stand yeah. out, I guess. But – uh, they've lost three games this year, and, you know, it's a one-game deal. It makes it the most exciting sporting event in the country on a yep. three-week you know, run here, and we're getting ready to finish it up. All right, we have uh, DJ Burns versus Zach Eady in one side. This is old school. We haven't seen a real big man battle like this in a while. Yeah, I, I've seen Purdue play a little bit on TV. Eady's a, a tremendous player and a tremendous talent. Uh, defensively, I don't know how far he'll come out. Uh, say if Burns is setting a high ball screen, I don't right. know where Edie will be. Will he be back up or will he be up on him? So those kind of things will decide the game. But they're both great players, and it's going to be a tremendous matchup. Mm. I mean, those guys uh, are playing their best individual basketball of the year, it looks like, both of them. And uh, they're both the two stars of their two teams. So, you know, forget about that guard play and stuff. It's the big guys, I guess, that get the job done. So, <laughs> Good luck to both of them. I'm rooting for the Wolfpack. You know that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, what's interesting is that, like, nobody's got a solution for either guy. I mean, nobody's been able to. Edie went for 40 points uh, in the regional final win. I mean, there, nobody has an answer for that. But you could say the same thing about DJ Burns. Watching the game yesterday, did, did I mean, could Duke have done something else to slow him down? Those guys at Duke make a lot of money. They're making the right decisions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just he is. I, I, I think I used the word mismatch last week when I talked to yeah. you. He, he's just a mismatch everywhere on the floor. He's a mismatch, and he's enjoying passing the ball, and yeah. they're really playing through him. What 
people used to call maybe a point center. And uh, he's just a mismatch. And Edie is, too, on the other end. Yep. And, you know, foul trouble situations could enter into it. It's a physical game. And uh, depending on a couple calls, you know, it could, uh, it could hurt either team. And particularly either one of those two players get in foul trouble or yep. have to sit down. Um, you know, it, it makes their team not quite as good. All right, give me an un- – Monty Tao is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Give me a player that you thought may- maybe below the surface was really key for NC State on uh, in last night's win. Well, I thought the fact that they were not playing well and when you looked up, you would have thought they would be behind by 15 or 16 and Duke wasn't able to separate yeah. in that first half. And then NC State finally – uh, got their game together, and by the time they got to steamrolling, uh, Duke couldn't do anything about it. You know, Burns was getting his, Horn was getting his. It was just, uh, you know, they were they were getting taken to the hoop, really, is what was going on. And uh, it just showed, you know, Duke's been a great team all year, and you can be a great team, but if you run into the wrong team and the wrong matchups, uh, you can have your season over, and NC State's happy with the matchup it looked like and yep. always felt like they thought they could win. It looked like to me, NC State, they just, they're taking care of business. They're giving people the business, and they're just, you know, they think they're going to win every game, and that's a great mindset. And if you got the talent, which they do, to back it up and the coaches, uh, you know, anything's possible. So much confidence that they're playing with. To me, watching the second half, I thought that even with a six-point lead, Duke looked like they were more panicked and more rushed and everything came more difficult for them. I thought State just looked very comfortable and confident even as they were down six points. And once they started crawling back, you know, uh, closer to the lead, I thought you could tell it was a snowball downhill. Yeah, they're just a tough physical bunch, NC State is. You know, that uh, O'Connell being a lacrosse player, he is, he's fearless, you know. Yep. He goes to the basket, and he's strong and physical. And obviously, Burns, Horns, you know, physical scoring guard. Uh, they're physical, and I think I think they are doing a better job on defense. And I think it's taking its uh, toll on some teams. And I think I think they eventually just wore mentally and physically. It looked like to me just um, just wore Duke down towards the end of that game. I don't think there's any question about it. All right, so uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say we're talking on Monday. Yeah, I hope so, man. <laughs> That would, that would be absolutely wonderful, and it would be great for me, but really who it would be great for is those guys playing and those coaches coaching and those fans cheering. I've had my day, you know, and I've lived off of it for 50 years, so I hope <laughs> they get their day, and uh, I hope they come through because it's a great feeling, and uh, it's a life-changing experience. If you can get through and win that uh, national championship, yep. um, it's, a, it's a big deal. So good luck to them, and I hope they, hope they come through. I'm really pulling for them. Monty Tao, I thank you very much, sir. I'll talk to you again. Okay, thank you so much. You got it. We should just make the uh, make the arrangement now. We'll do it Monday, next Monday, uh, as the Wolfpack are getting ready to play for a national. Just put it out there. Championship. Uh, one, before we take a break, real quick, one more thing, because um, there's you have so many different things running through your head about um, what happened, why it happened, who's to blame, all of this. And I think the the fandom of all of it plays a huge role uh, in that it's just not something that over the last of over recent memory, forget about a time frame in terms of how many years, but in you know in recent times, there just hasn't been sustained success in one of the major sports. You know, we're talking about men's and women's basketball, football. Really, the best program for sustained success has been Elliott Avent's baseball program. And that's really been it. And I granted, wrestling's been really good, and I don't want to disparage any of this. But in terms of the major sports, and I consider baseball one of the major sports, it really hasn't been this. So there's been a lot of, you know, theoretical heartbreak None of it really compares to the joy of what we've what we've basically been privy to over the last few weeks. Um, and the ACC tournament was amazing, and then you back it up by getting to a Final Four. I mean, this is just unheard of stuff. I do find it fascinating that 
I think it's significant that you bought that you beat Duke twice in what was it uh, Thursday of ACC tournament week and Sunday. Yeah. So in ten days you beat Duke twice. They couldn't plan for you. Nope. Is it ten days? I don't even know anymore. Yeah. It's all a blur. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. It was it's it's been more than ten days. Like it's like uh seventeen days. Whatever it is. You beat Duke twice. You beat him three times. Because remember you played him the Monday before the end of the regular season. My brain is not working. My brain is not functioning properly. But you beat Duke three times in March. Let's just say that. I mean, you didn't beat him three times. You lost the first time. But you you won the last two in March. Yeah, they played on the 14th and the 4th. All right, 4th and the 14th, separated by 10 days, mm-hmm. 14th to the 31st, so 17 days. Um, it's just been – it has been a remarkable run – and I don't think you can minimize the fact that they, they've got Duke twice in this span. And because you beat them the first time, you knew you were going to get their best shot. And you still took the early punch and you punched back. And then Duke just, they didn't seem like they had their fastball. I don't know if playing Houston took a lot out of them. Um, there's a lot of conversation about, you know, Duke should have beaten the Cougars by more, maybe so. Uh, but this one, this Duke team, there was something missing from somewhere. Granted, they didn't get the best Jeremy Roach end of season. Roach wasn't good against Carolina. He wasn't good against State. There are two final games before the NCAA tournament and it finally looked like Jeremy Roach in the second half against the Cougars finally looked like we were getting the Jeremy Roach we expected and it was just okay wasn't great yesterday Jared McCain was really their best guard Kyle Filipowski I thought played reasonably well uh, in the NCAA tournament certainly played well against uh, Houston and Oakland but Last night, I thought Kyle was just, he was sort of panicked like most of Duke's players looked. I actually thought Jared McCain looked the most comfortable in his role. Maybe Sean Stewart also looked really comfortable in his role. Ryan Young is somebody that probably got them settled the most against Houston. Ryan Young came off the bench after Duke had some early turnovers and some a uh, couple of fouls. And Ryan Young just, he played so well for about a five-minute stretch. Got Duke got some buckets. He scored. Just thought there was a lot of good that Ryan Young brought to it on Friday night against Houston. But they really didn't have any performances like that against NC State. And you can't get to a Final Four without your best players being really good. And Kyle Filipowski was. But nobody else really was. Jared McCain, I thought, played very well uh, in stretches, but he was also, like, didn't get the ball in stretches against State yesterday. But I think the player that probably has the most on his mind right now is Tyrese Proctor, who the second half of last year was amazing for Duke. And his experience, even in the loss to Tennessee, where he was basically the only guy who really played well, you thought that would carry over into the tournament. But, man, it's hard to just flip a switch. Yeah. And I think Duke was hoping that they could flip a switch. But they never kicked on in the second half. That was all NC State. Duke had no answers. And I think Duke was more deer in the headlights than anything. Especially once Kyle was fouled out. Once that was done, it was like, 
Okay. Well, it was over it by was that over. point. It was, I think, five minutes left that was, in the game. It was like four something, but yeah. it was done, done by so that. He was. Point. Uh, personally, I thought it was done about five minutes prior, even with like ten minutes left in the game. Oh yeah, they had all the momentum. You you just never got the sense that Duke had another run, a push in him, to make the score kind of force NC State to worry, put any pressure. At all on the Wolfpack. Uh, all right, we'll do a little rewind. Were there other things that happened? We haven't talked enough about uh, the state women. Oh, Canes had a good weekend. They did. We'll see if there's stuff we didn't have uh, time to get to. Next. Rally to Boom, Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Fair housing is more than just a celebration in April. For North Carolina's realtors, it's an everyday standard. For the 56,000 realtors across our state, we embrace and support fair housing to stamp out discrimination in all forms. As realtors, we believe fairness is worth fighting for, and we won't stop until the fight is won. Celebrating Fair Housing Month, North Carolina Realtors. We open doors to everyone. Paid for by North Carolina Realtors. From the food we eat to the clothes we wear, agriculture touches every corner of our daily lives. I'm Lee Ivey, director of the Agricultural Institute at NC State University. With the world's population growing, we need people equipped and trained to meet the needs of our future. In our program, we rise to meet that challenge every day and our students are engaged and invested. Learn more about our program online by searching NC State Ag Institute. Deadline for fall enrollment is June 1st. Two years, one degree, endless possibilities. All right, North Carolina, FanDuel, America's number one sports book, officially live, up and running here in the Tar Heel State. And new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up now. Then you can bet on everything from hoops to NASCAR and everything in between all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Get started with $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You must be 21 or older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonuses issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.com. The Body Armor State Games are coming to Charlotte this June. Registration is open to athletes of all ages and skill levels. In 25 different sports. The Body Armor State Games features 13,000 athletes and 700 teams. Don't miss out on North Carolina's largest sports festival of the year. Visit BodyArmorStateGames.org today. The Body Armor State Games are proud to partner with Truist, Harris Teeter, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. NC Medicaid is for more people like me. Adults who don't have children. People who serve. People who do the heavy lifting. Child care teachers. Full health care coverage at low or no cost. Doctor's visits, emergency rooms, and prescriptions. So if you applied before and didn't get it, apply again. NC Medicaid covers more people than ever before. NC Medicaid is for more people. See if you qualify at medicaid.nc.gov. It's the first day of the first grade. And she found a new best friend It's a laid back Sunday afternoon You wish would never end The homemade taste of bluebell And good friends gathered round The good old days are being made right now St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake Now bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made right now. 
Look for Blue Bell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. This is Adam Gold. Listen, the ACC is not as bad as everyone out there. Joe Lenardi and all the proctologists. They, <laughs> wow. They, Whoa. It's not Wait a as second. bad as... Victoria, did you hear that? <laughs> it's a proctologist. The Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I am Adam Gold, Victoria producing the program. I'm not sure you're aware, but NC State is going to the Final Four in both the men's and the women's tournaments. Uh, Incredible stuff. It's the 11th time ever that that has happened. I think most of them have been (laughs) Connecticut. Duke has done it once. I know that. Uh, back in, what, 1999, I believe, the Blue Devils were in the final four in both the men's and the women's game. I um, actually think the women might have lost to Purdue that year. Uh, again, just it's a, at this point foggy memory uh, kind of a guess. But it is an incredible run, and we talked to Wes Moore uh, a lot during the course of the year. That team has been incredible throughout. I do want to mention, because we haven't done it yet at all, the Hurricanes. So we haven't even, you know, we sit here, and granted, today is a huge day for um, NC State Athletics, but their their roommates. Yes. Their roommates have been doing pretty well uh, as well. So over the last two games, they have clinched first the playoffs, the Thursday win over Detroit at PNC Arena. And then they go to Montreal and not a not a Rembrandt in any way, shape, or form in terms of how you played, but again, kind of a professional, you know, get the job done win. And they still didn't give up a goal. They win the game on Thursday night, four nothing against Detroit here. Then you go to Montreal and you win three nothing there back to back shutouts they've allowed i think one goal in the last four games is it one goal in the last four games uh two goals two goals in the last or, or whatever no three goals in the last four games total um yes two empty net goals were not counting cuz they don't go against your goaltenders so goalies have allowed three goals combined in the last four games Obviously, Carolina is doing well in that department, but they have everything really going on well right now. The only thing that they would like to see better is more production from Andre Spechnikov. But if you go back and you listen to the Canes Corner podcast, which is available wherever you get your podcasts, and we do it live after every Hurricanes game, if you go back and listen, um, you will uh, you will be reminded that Andre actually played very well in Montreal without actually getting on the score sheet. Stayed out of the penalty box, and I thought they were dangerous. I thought that line, which centered by Jordan Stahl, was very dangerous, and I wouldn't be completely shocked if they stayed together at least for a little bit of time. Ultimately, I think that uh, it's Stahl, Martinook, and Faust will be together, but knowing that they have still three more days off. Uh, Jesper Foss made the trip to Montreal, did not play because they knew they had this time coming up, so why why push him to come back when he didn't have to? Uh, I think you'll see Jesper Foss draw back into the lineup on Thursday, and then we'll get an idea of what it's probably going to look like, um, at least as we start the playoffs. So um, I don't know Rod Brendamore's thinking about who who's going to play with who, but... It was good to see Andre play well. The top line of Aho, Gensel, and Jarvis, they have now played together nine consecutive games. They have 43 points. Yeah, wow. that's not that's a joke. A lot. <laughs> 43 points in the nine games. Aho's got 17 points. Gensel has 15. Jarvis has 11. Right, 43 points, trying to think it's uh, 18 goals. Mm. Ajo's got eight, I think Jarvis has eight, and Gensel has two. 
Yeah. Actually, no. Um, does Gensel have? To, I don't think he was playing with Ajo when he had his two goals. Maybe he was. Uh, but I th- yeah, I actually think the number is 18. 43 points in nine games, and they're combined plus 40. So good. Yeah, they have been everything you could have ever wanted from your top line. And then you throw in the the performances they're getting on defense and in goal. Um, and it's not like the other guys haven't played well up front. But right now, everything is being overshadowed by how well your top line is playing. Um, by the way, Jack Drury the other night lost his last two faceoffs, but at one point was 9-for-9 nine nine in the faceoff circle against Montreal. He lost his last two to end up 9 and two in the circle. But that's another thing Carolina has generally been doing well of late, and that's winning a fair amount of faceoffs. Um, Ajo is basically at 55% on the year. Uh, Jordan Stahl's closer to 58%. Um, basically, everybody of Carolina's top four centers. Uh, Kuznetsov, I think, is below 50% now. Uh, but historically, he's always been below 50%. But, you know, Rod will probably spot him here and there in the faceoff circle. But everything right now seems to be going well. As long as Andre starts to score. That'd be great. That would be uh, that would be ideal. Um, it does look like the playoff, the matchups are not set. But it looks like the groups are pretty much set in both conferences. The West is undoubtedly set. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not mathematical, but we're getting fairly close to it being uh, math, uh, all about math. Uh, The Red Wings and the Islanders are sort of still in it, um, but it really depends on what the Flyers and the Capitals do since the Flyers have a few more points. We're running out of time. Yes. That's seven, maybe eight games left for most teams. And the the fact remains is that Washington still has games in hand. So you're really chasing Philadelphia at this point. But, man, the the Islanders and you know, the Devils have been on the fringe of it. They just have not played consistently well enough to compile enough points to really put themselves in great shape. Uh, but we're close to, you know, knowing the group. And then for the Hurricanes, more than likely you're going to get Washington, who's taken both games from Carolina this year in shootouts. No, uh, it's – I think Carolina might have beaten them once in Washington. It did. They beat them once in Washington, badly in Washington. I'm just pretty sure that last game was during a full moon. (laughs) Uh, Right. (laughs) It was nuts. So, no, that was a crazy game. And they'll come to – PNC Arena on Friday. Uh, Boston Thursday, Washington Friday. I will not be at either game, by the way. I will be in Phoenix at the Final Four. Um, We will still be doing the um, pregame, postgame, and the um, podcast. We'll still be doing that, but we'll be doing it from Phoenix as opposed to from PNC Arena, which for what it's worth is either, it probably doesn't matter to most people. Uh, matters to me, but it doesn't matter to most people. Anyway, um, but the way Carolina has been playing, do you want to play Washington or do you want to play Philadelphia uh, against whom Carolina, I believe, has beaten uh, won three out of the four? Yeah, I think so. Philadelphia is playing, is, isn't playing nearly as well as Washington. I don't think the Flyers are going to be able to stay ahead of the uh, of the Capitals. I think the Capitals are going to pass him, and that'll be your first-round matchup. And that really is very much a rival for Carolina. Washington very much is a rival. Philadelphia, we have a lot of Flyers fans here, but I wouldn't consider the Flyers a rival of Carolina. Washington, yes. Big time. Absolutely. Uh, and then, more than likely... Uh, Rangers, uh, who I think will end up playing the Flyers in the first round, because I don't think Detroit's going to win enough to get back in it. Uh, you know, who f- who falls apart less between the Flyers and the Red Wings? And the Flyers have more room to fall. They have there's a bigger cushion for them. Detroit doesn't have any cushion. 
No. I mean, they're outside of the line right now. So uh, looking forward to the the closing of the regular season and then getting this all started in the postseason. All right, let's get to a rewind. And then maybe we'll uh, we'll spend a couple of minutes with stuff we didn't have time for. I wanted to talk a little Canes right there. Uh, all right, Chris Corciani joined us earlier in the program, a legend of NC State. And I asked him when he allow, at what point did he start to believe that this could actually happen? Adam, I I still haven't gotten gotten over the ACC tournament. I mean, this is, <laughs> I mean it's, it's so unreal. I mean, you couldn't write some comical movie. I mean, it's the wildest thing that I've seen in sports, and it just happens to be, you know, with my favorite team. So it's a it's a beautiful story. It just really hasn't sunk in that, that NC State, not only did they win five games in five days, we're going to the Final Four. <laughs> when do you leave for Phoenix? I'm leaving Thursday. <laughs> can't, can't wait. I mean, I can't wait to get out there and soak it in. And, you know, our, our fan base has been starved of success for, you know, close to 40 years. And, right. it, it, you know, th- this is so great. I'm happy for the team. I'm happy for Coach Keats. But I tell you, my heart goes out to all the fans that have put up with all the struggles and, and futile seasons. I mean, th- this is this is for Wolf Pack Nation. Yeah, the, the, the thing I kept getting back to about this is that – and. It's what makes fandom so great. And you hear so many people say, why would you want to be a state fan? I get it. I get it. In in many cases, like when you ask kids, why did you become a fan of such and such a team? Um, if the answer isn't, well, because my dad was a fan or my mom was a fan why did you you know it's kind of passed down fandom often is passed down from generation to generation um in many cases it's well well uh they won all the time yes it is we like winning right I'm, and I'm, I'm not using this as a as a negative i'm just saying well that's a lot of the reason why somebody becomes a fan mm-hmm. of a certain team like the yankees yeah, that's they're going to come up and stuff we didn't have time oh, for. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, no, uh, no joke there. Um, I, I just think it's, but when it's, when you're a fan of a team that doesn't win all the time, the Panthers. <laughs> yeah, right. no, no, I'm seriously. just. I feel like you're talking to me when we're talking about the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> but how how great will it feel? Yeah. Eventually, when you know we win three games. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe half the season. Sorry, I didn't know that. Fine. No, no. <laughs> it's what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. So it just makes it it makes it more powerful when your team does something that is this special. Um and there is a you know, an unexpected part of this that adds to the whole feeling. It just it, it ratches it up so much. Uh, Gregory on Twitter, uh, fandom is incredible. I will say when you're a fan of a school that wins often, it's not as fun. I don't know that that's true. I don't think that's true. I think it is as fun. It's different fun. Uh, losing sucks harder because you rely on the wins. I, again, I think we're disparaging those fans, and I don't want to do that. But I think you do become maybe numb to it is not the right phrase. It just becomes commonplace. Yeah, you're conditioned to it. It's like, oh, we won again. 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 And when you don't win as much, and that's nothing but a fact, it becomes that much more impactful and I so I think this run for state has been so great and I could not be happier for every single Wolfpack fan that I know every single one uh, who have just been begging 
begging, and now you get two Final Four teams. Yeah. All right. Uh, deal with that. All right. Before we get out of here, let's do uh, stuff we didn't have time for. All the stuff. And appropriate here is my friend James Dunn, who is a musician who wrote this uh, and actually uh, came up with the whole premise while waiting and uh, sitting in traffic while he was picking his kids up from school. But he's a big state fan, so he's fired up about all of this. So uh, congratulations on your uh, on your fandom. All right, I got two things in stuff we didn't have time for. One is baseball. So this is my world. Okay? Yeah. So we just opened up the season. I know the Dodgers and Padres played in Korea, but we just opened up the season proper. I don't know what the – what are the Cubs? What, what's uh, their record? They finally won one game yesterday. So well, way, way ahead of the Mets. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the Mets are 0-3. They opened up the season at home against the Milwaukee Brewers, got swept yeah. by the Milwaukee Brewers. The Mets' new general manager – uh, a guy named David Stearns, who technically is a friend of this program. He's been on because he used to be the general manager of the Milwaukee Brewers, mm-hmm. who just swept the Mets at City Field. Uh, and because the um, Carolina Mudcats were a farm club of the Brewers, we had him on a couple times to talk about, uh, you know, prospect and whatnot. Uh, anyway, so way to go, Mets, to start 0-3 at home. The Yankees, on the other hand, went to Houston – and swept the Astros four straight. That is a – like, the Yankees are good, but good to a point. Yeah. And they're missing their top starter, and uh, they are now 4-0. Uh, so it pains me to even bring that up. And finally, uh, we had – we talked about it on Friday. Essentially a title fight in the Premier League. Arsenal went to Man City, and they bored the living hell out of us for 90 plus minutes. Oh no. It was a 0 0 draw, nil nil draw. And I was disappointed because I really felt like only City tried to win. That bothered me. See everybody tomorrow. Thank you. Before. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Hey, it's Adam Gold from my man, Coach Pete DeRuta, Capital Financial Advisory Group in Apex. You shouldn't need a retirement plan to follow your team to the Final Four. But if you do, you might want to plan ahead. I understand that you had 41 years to plan for this one, but still, sometimes it comes out of nowhere like this did. Anyway, you want to plan for retirement, you plan with the best, and the best is Coach Pete DeRuta, Capital Financial Advisory Group in Apex. He can totally customize a retirement plan for you that will get you from point A, where you are now, to point B, the ability to, in retirement, follow your team to the Final Four (laughs) if they get there, when they get there. All you have to do is call 888-843-0013 or text ADAM to 600-700. We're going to unlock two things for you. One, that total customized retirement plan for you. It's a $1,000 value. Also, one of Coach Pete's best-selling books, and he's got a bunch of those. Isn't that great? Capital Financial Advisory Group and Coach Pete Deruta plan for your retirement with the best. Coach Pete Deruta, text Adam to 600 700 today. It's not Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. The very first.